citizens of Tampa. Tampa City Council will now come in session for this evening session for uh, October 14, 2021, 501. Uh, roll call, please. Carlson. Here. Manny Skakel. Here. Dinkfelder. Here. Cedro. Here. Vieira. Here. Miranda. Here. And Goose. Here. We have a physical quorum. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, Mr. Shelby, please. Yes. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of Tampa City Council. Martin Shelby, City Council Attorney. Uh, as the chair said, you have a physical quorum present live in chambers, and tonight's uh, land use and quasi-judicial uh, hearings are uh, being conducted um, in light of the continuing COVID-19 government-issued health standards or guidance in effect. Um, and because of that, members of the public shall have the ability to participate virtually through video teleconferencing, which is referred to by Florida statutes and rules as communication media technology. The public and the p and citizens of Tampa are able to watch, li listen, and view this meeting on Spectrum Channel 640, Frontier Channel 15, and on the internet at tampa.gov forward slash live stream. Now, there are alternative methods to participate in tonight's meeting. And those have been um, uh, listed in the uh, notice of hearing and also on the city's website at tampa.gov forward slash city council, one word. Now, for those who want to participate remotely through communications media technology, um, pre-application was required and that information is available on the city of Tampa's uh, the City Council's webpage and also at tampa.gov forward slash quasi, Q-U-A-S-I. Also, Council, the other ways people can participate um, are through writing by email. And if somebody wants to participate in person um, and does not have access to a CMT device, they can come to the second floor, the second floor of Old City Hall and use the CMT facilities that are made available this evening to the public and please be reminded that those attending the meeting in person should wear face masks inside Old City Hall. Also, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to ask the people on the second floor to please remain quiet, that if you should talk, that you talk in a whisper or a low voice or take your comments perhaps to the third floor if you need to discuss so that the sound uh, does not travel and the hearings can be conducted efficiently. Uh, written comments that have been received have been distributed to City Council and will be included in the permanent record of the meeting. All comments that have been timely received by mail, email, or via CMT will be afforded equal consideration as if the public comments were made in person. One last comment with regard to the platform virtually go to meeting. There is a chat box. That chat box is not to be used to communicate with City Council members. That's only to be used if you have technical problems. Please do not communicate um, using the chat box unless it's for a technical issue. That being the case, Mr. Chairman and members of council, I'd ask that you waive the rules and adopt these rules consistent with what's in the notice and the agenda um, relative to a virtual hybrid meeting. Motion made rules. Second. So moved. Mr. Romano, uh, motion, Mr. Sister, a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. We're open for business. Mr. Chairman, let's go to the agenda. Any housekeeping orders, please, sir? Sure, Mr. Chairman. Um, did you want to? Um, here from the staff with the that. Who we have tonight, Zane? I believe uh, this evening. Good, e good evening, Council Annie Barnes, it's Development Coordination. There are a few items to clean up for you can tonight. We get, excuse me, Annie, can we, can we get a little more volume in the uh, Council, please? We can't hear. Try it again, Amy. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Council Annie Barnes, Development Coordination. There are a few items to clean up before you tonight. Uh, the first item is item number two, REZ 2105. The applicant has withdrawn this application. Can you please remove this application from the agenda? Ms. Maniscal's motion was withdrawn. Second, Mr. Vieira, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Uh, item number eight, REZ 2181. The application cannot be heard because the notice was not perfected. Can you please remove this application from the agenda? Ms. Maniscal is moved. Second. Second, Mr. Citro, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. <clears throat> item number three, VAC 2109, and item number 10, REZ 2186. The applicant is requesting to continue both applications to de the December 9th, 2021 council hearing. I believe the agent is available as well. 
Re repeat that again. You said item number nine? Three and ten. Three, three, and, ten. three and ten. Three and ten and, go together. And Mr. Chairman, if you can, just ask the applicant to come up, please, if there's anything that needs to be said. Oh, is the applicant here? Um, hey, uh, good evening, Council. Tyler Hudson, 400 North Ashley Drive. Uh, can you all see me? We can see you, sir. Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, uh, requesting a continuance to December 9th for these paired hearings. Um, one's a right-of-way vacating, the other is a rezoning. Uh, we just need about 60 more days to clean up a few items, so we present to you the most complete uh, application possible and would appreciate your uh, motion to continue this to December 9th. Thank you. Well, Mr. Tease, Ms. If I can, Mr. Chairman. We recognize. If I, if I can. Um, are there any registered speakers relative to three or ten? Um, Madam Clerk? No. Okay. Other than the applicant and the rep applicant and representative. Okay. Um, and um, Mr. Chairman, just a reminder, and to those who are watching on television, um, we just have to verify the date and the time and see if that fits within the calendar, um, if we can do that with, uh, with staff. You're requesting, you're requesting when, sir? Dece December 9th. Ms. Barnes? Um, so uh, 5.01 p.m. there are, um, on December 9th, there will be a total of 13 <coughs> rezoning applications that night. So this would, this would be the maximum, I guess, at this point, unless the council would wish to go ahead more and waive those rules. Um, and Mr. Chairman, again, we're, we're going to have to discuss how on Monday we move forward past that, but uh, if that's the application and there is a slot available pursuant to your, your uh, current direction, um, I believe that would be appropriate if it's council's pleasure. Any comments in reference to the request? Mr. Chair, if I may, uh, Mr. Hudson, are you there? Yes, sir. Uh, what is the hardship that you're needing this, uh, this continuance for? Sure, so this is a, a lot of echo here. There's a, this property comprises a full city block and there is a historic structure at the northeast corner. That structure is uh, subject to a certificate of appropriateness application that will be heard on December 6th to relocate that structure. And we'd like to have before you on December 9th, the confirmation that that, uh, that has been approved. I think it's gonna make for a more, uh, a simpler, simpler story. Is it imperative that it's December 9th? It is, sir. Due to some contractual deadlines, um, this uh, must be, uh, the, the first reading must happen under the contracts uh, this year in December. And uh, we have significant amounts of neighborhood support. Uh, we are not aware of any opposition at this time. And understanding council's busy schedule, we will give a much more efficient presentation uh, at that time. And we'll be very respectful of your time, as we always seek to do. Thank you, Mr. Hudson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move to continue. Uh, three, okay. three and ten to December ninth. <clears throat> okay. Let me let me at, say this at five oh one p.m. At five oh one p.m. Let me let me say this, gentlemen. You know, uh, I'm I'm going to go ahead and, and, and go along with it today because Monday we're going to it's going to be D Day, and we're going to make some decisions on Monday about these continuances. Uh, you know, and a lot of other aspects that we council needs to do. But I'll entertain the motion tonight to give Mr. Hudson that uh, that leeway. But uh, I can tell you, after uh, tonight, hopefully, uh, and with uh, going forward, we won't be having these kind of continuances anymore. Uh, Mr. Dinkler has made a motion. Mr. Citra, Mr. Uh, Miranda has seconded. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Mr. Shelby, you're recognized. Yes, thank you. And just a reminder to the public that those items, uh, there will be no further notice. They are continued to September 9th, 2021, at 5 1 p.m. Thank you, Mr. Hudson. Is there anything else? That's it. Thank you, Council. Thank, thank you, sir. sir. All right. uh, the last five. Staff, go ahead. Uh, the last item, item number six, is REZ 2177. Uh, the applicant is requesting to continue the application to November 18th, 2021. Um, I believe the agent is available for any questions as well. That was to November 18th, is it? That is correct. Where's November 8th? I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. May I inquire? You're right. Isn't, yeah, thank you. Is November 18th available for uh, this continuance? Uh, yes, uh, there will be a total of 12 cases if continued. And I believe I see Ms. Corbett online. Yes, good evening, Council. Cami Corbett with the law firm of Hill, Ward, and Henderson. Uh, we did send in a letter on Tuesday afternoon requesting a continuance to the November 18th uh, City Council date 
we uh, were ready to go, but we are, before we requested, we requested the continuance because we are working with Save Beach Park and some of the other neighborhood associations over there. And uh, we're working on specifically trying to reassign the property to a less congested school district. And we were hoping we would be further along with that process than uh, we, we are today. And so in good faith, we agreed to continue this case uh, to November 19th uh, at their request because they would like some further assurances from the school board that this is going to happen and obviously this isn't something that we could condition the zoning on and so we agreed to go ahead and request the continuance and we noted in the letter that we waived the 180 day processing time frame and would respectfully request that you approve it. You recognize sir. Thank you Mr. Chairman as a cautionary uh, I believe and I'm not trying to take sides with either one here but uh, I think this is your second or third continuance, am I correct? No. no. This we have first? not, this is, this is our first scheduled hearing date. Okay, then I had you confused with another one in that neighborhood. I'm sorry, I apologize to you. Yeah, no, this is our first. We were, we were ready to go, um, oh, I, I, but I, we really I, were pinched on time with the school board and yeah, I read uh, it, I read safety. It. Okay, thanks. Mr. Chair, I move to... Uh, Mr. Shelby first, he okay. would get his hand up. You recognize, sir? If I can, Mr. Chairman, I don't have a specific recollection of the hearings tonight being opened, and I wanted to make sure that the ones that have already been continued are continu as opened and continued, so I believe a motion... Moved uh, to open. Uh, Re it open. Retroactively? We, I, we have to do what we have to do, but I, I want to make sure that the hearings are open when the time is we continue them, and I don't believe... Um, Mr. Citro has moved it. Mr. Maniscalco has second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank Any you. opposed? Hearing's on. Okay, now with regard to this one, uh, Council, I'm sorry, was there a motion that's... I'm about believe. ready to make it. Mr. Chair, file number REZ21-77. I move that they be, can that be continued until November 18th at 5.01 p.m. Okay. Mr. Citro has moved it. Mr. Maniscalco has second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Granted. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. What else we have? Uh... Uh, <clears throat> Anastasia Barnes Development Coordination. Uh, there are no other um, housekeeping items. However, uh, I do request that staff be sworn in at this time. What about item number eight? Cannot be heard. I didn't hear us talk about item number eight. We... I believe item number eight was removed. Is that correct, Madam Clerk? We removed that in here. Uh, good evening, Anastasia Barnes. Item number eight, REZ 2181. The application cannot be heard because the notice was not perfected. Can you please remove this item from that from I, this application to the agenda? I think I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't hear number eight. Yes, we had Manny Scott who made the motion and yes. Cedro second it. On eight? Okay, all right. If you already made, you made it. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, item number one is not quasi judicial. We can take that up if you wish, and then we'll come back to the quasi judicial matter. <laughs> All right, we took out a little more, Mr. Shelby. All right, that's it, uh, Ms. Barnes? Yes, and then uh, before we continue, um, could we please swear staff in? All right, cool. that'd be fine. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear for you would tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I yes. do. Thank, yes. thank you. All right, item number one. Good evening, Chairman Goods and Council Members. McLean Evans, Assistant City Attorney. Agenda item number one before you is the first of two public hearings before Council for a proposed designation of a brownfields area pursuant to Chapter 376 Florida Statutes for a property located at 4110 George Road. An application has been submitted to the City of Tampa by the site developer Highwoods Limited, Highwoods Realty Limited Partnership requesting designation of this property is a brownfield area to assist in the assessment and remediation of environmental impacts that may exist on the property. <clears throat> Staff has reviewed the application and determined it meets the statutory criteria for a brownfield area designation. In accordance with the statutory requirement, the property owner has held their on-site public hearing on Monday, September 13th at the Independence Park office complex. Details of the designation have been outlined in a document entitled Staff Report on an Independence Park Redevelopment Area Proposed Brownfield Area Designation, which has been provided in your SIRE package and is available for public review at the City Clerk's Office. At the conclusion of the second public hearing, which is scheduled for November 4th at 9 a.m., Council will have an opportunity to pass a resolution designating Independence Park Redevelopment Area as a brownfield area. 
The purpose of this evening's hearing is to take public comment. No other action is required by council on this item today. Staff and I are available to answer any questions you may have. Any questions for staff? Any questions? All right. We need a motion to move on. Right, Mr. Shelby? Uh, is it open to the, it's a public hearing. Yeah. And uh, everybody on the second floor to speak on that? Eileen Rosario, Development and Growth Management. There's no one here to speak on this item. Good evening, Good evening. Good, Good evening. Good evening. All right, anybody to? Uh, no yeah. rest of speakers for this item. No rest of speakers, okay. So, Ms. Ms. Evans, there's no, no official action to be taken by council tonight? Simply taking public comment if any public has turned out to speak. Other than that, um, that concludes our business. We can close the hearing. And the, sec and the second public hearing will be on November 4th at 9 a.m. Correct. All right, Mr. Maniscalco is going to close. Mr. Miranda is second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. All right, item number two, three has been scratched. Item number four. Thank you, Council. Annie Barnes, Development Coordination. Item number four is REZ 2142. The subject property is located at 411 East Palm Avenue. The request is to rezone the property from planned development to planned development to allow development of residential single family, semi detached, and residential studio dwellings. I'll turn over the presentation to the Planning Commission, and after their presentation, I'll conclude my report. Jennifer Malone with the Planning Commission. Can I have permission to share my screen? You be sworn, correct? I have been sworn. All right. Okay, so if um, Annie opened us up, this is REZ2142. This is located in the Central Tampa Planning District within the Tampa Heights Urban Village. There is a transit stop adjacent to the site at the corner of North Central Avenue and East Palm Avenue. The site is not within an evacuation zone. Um, the surrounding area is it's on, on the south side of East Palm, just west of the I-275 um, interstate. This section of Palm is characterized by some office buildings. We have a law firm to the north or to the Northwest, we have the Tampa Heights Junior Civic Association in the area as well. And then to the south of the site, we have some residential uses. Uh, the adopted future land use is residential 83. That's a pretty high future land use category. It's primarily within this area of the city. Um, to the north, that lighter blue brown color is residential 35. And then to the east is urban mixed use 60. Um, we did find this consistent with the comprehensive plan. The proposed rezoning would allow consideration of four dwelling units on the site. That's an overall density of 18 units per acre, which is consistent with that residential 83, which allows up to 83 dwelling units per acre. So it's actually a little bit lower than that maximum. Um, we also, from a design perspective, were supportive of the units utilizing the alley on the southern boundary of the plan, which is supported by the southern boundary of the site which is supported by the comprehensive plan. And lastly, this request supports the comprehensive plan policies as it relates to housing the city's population. Um, we always wanna make sure that there's an adequate supply of housing to meet the needs of that present and growing population. And the plan supports um, utilizing those infill parcels or vacant parcels. And it is within an urban village. And we also want to direct the greatest share of growth to those areas. So that concludes my presentation. I'm available for any questions. Thank you. Any questions from Planning Commission? Any questions? All right, we'll hear from the city staff. Thank you, Annie Barnes, Development Coordination. Uh, can I please share my screen? All right, can you please, or can you see my screen? We can see your screen. Great, thank you. Uh, again, the applicant is proposing to rezone 411 East, uh, East Palm Avenue from planned development to planned development to allow for development of residential single family semi-detached and residential studio dwellings. The applicant is requesting two waivers. The first waiver requested is to allow parking in a non-structurally integrated garage. And the second waiver is to reduce parking uh, required parking from nine to eight spaces, which is an 11% reduction. 
The site is comprised of Lot 1, Block 4 of Fuchs Subdivision, platted in 1895 and shown here in red. <coughs> This is a survey of the, shine, of the site. Um, shown here is uh, about 8,900 square feet or 0.2 acres in size. This is the site plan, plan provided by the applicant showing the two proposed semi or single family semi-detached residential units and two residential uh, studio units. As you can see, vehicular access is provided from East Palm Avenue for the um, single family semi-detached units and uh, vehicular access is provided from the alley for the studio dwellings. These are the elevations, the proposed uh, single family semi-detached structures, and these are the elevations of the proposed residential studio dwellings above a garage. So here's an aerial map in the surrounding zoning. Property directly northeast and west of the site is zoned RM24, residential multifamily. Property directly south of the subject property is zoned PD and developed with a single family detached dwelling. Uh, here's a picture of the subject site. As you can see, it's currently vacant. Shown here is property located across North Central Avenue and directly east of the site. Shown here is property again uh, east of the site facing I-275. Uh, shown here is the property located across North Central Avenue and southeast of the site. As you can see, it remains uh, mostly undeveloped. And this is the uh, intersection of East Palm Avenue and Central Avenue North, directly north of the subject site. Uh, development review and compliance staff has reviewed the application and found the request inconsistent with the City of Tampa Code and Ordinances. Please refer to transportation comments for overall inconsistency finding. Modifications to the site plan must be completed by the applicant between first and second reading, uh, as stated on the revision <coughs> sheet if approving the application. That concludes my presentation. I'm available for any questions you might have. Any questions for staff? Any questions for staff? All right, being no, we have from the applicant. Have you been sworn, sir? Good evening, Ralph Schuler. Have you been sworn, sir? I have been sworn, thank you. Um, good evening, Ralph Schuler with JVB Architect, 2401 North Howard Avenue. I'm the agent for the applicant. Um, the application that city staff has just described uh, as part of a final staff report is a four unit single family semi detached development um, with two units being on Palm Avenue, which will look like a single family home but are actually a, a duplex slash townhouse. The similar property at the south side of Palm Avenue, uh, those are, uh, again, historic houses or, um, and or uh, professional office space around and adjacent. <clears throat> we also have two additional uh, units over the garage, which are both studio one-bedroom in-law suites that allows for uh, an extremely similar uh, development style of other units within this, uh, this area. I want to go to the zoning. Zoning map, as described uh, by staff, we are here. We have some other uh, similar properties on, on south side of East Palm, and another this old historic house here, here, and here, an empty lot there. Um, and describing. Uh, one second, sir. We can't, we IT, can't we can't see on our monitors on the days. <laughs> All right, we have it now, so thank you. Continue. You want me to repeat that then? You, yes, so you can continue. Yeah, so, so again, this is our subject site. We have uh, s similar properties uh, in development style and, and density along the south edge of Palm Avenue. Here, as, uh, as Annie's alluded to, we are in, a, in an extremely dense zoning as we are in the urban core. Uh, Palm Avenue is here. Um, so everywhere surrounding this, the, the future land use is R83. Um, we would be allowed to up to 15 units here, which would obviously never work, but uh, we're asking for four, which we think is a, a, an extremely uh, appropriate density for this particular lot. <clears throat> 
again to review our, our site plan. Our site plan is um, has, has uh, a couple significant things. First of all, we've, we have been and presented this project through uh, the Architectural Review Commission and got a unanimous vote of, of support for this project for, for several reasons. First and foremost, we have an existing house here, an existing house here. We're taking the lot average of that house to create the, the setback here, which is around 19 feet. We have, again, two, two units which will look uh, like a single family house in scale and massing, um, a courtyard in the, um, here in the middle, two separate, um, oh, I'm sorry, two, two car garages uh, connected by a, a party wall. Again, the intent here is to really have uh, two um, single family semi-detached properties that could be um, sold independently and so each each side would then uh, again very traditional uh, have have a townhouse a two-car garage a studio above the two-car garage a, a, a um, parking space for the studio additional visitor spaces here we come up with eight spaces uh, the, the reason why transportation says we need nine is they believe uh, in that they calling this each a, a dwelling unit and they want two spaces each for these studios, which um, I understand is maybe technically correct, but I don't think it's practical. Um, so we, pr again, provide eight, eight parking spaces, um, which I think is more than sufficient for this development. Uh, we also have two, two large camphor trees here. We're, we're protecting those camphor trees um, from, uh, by we've pushed the building over slightly to, um, to make that happen. We have all of our uh, um, air conditioning and other stuff, um, not, not seen from the street as, as required. We will, this alley is currently improved and we would have at all, all of our access uh, from the alley, uh, except for just a ribbon drive for, for visitor parking. Uh, and I'll briefly show you the elevations. Again, um, this, is the, this is the front on Palm here. Um, this would again go through uh, a certificate of appropriateness through city council. I'm mean, sorry, through ARC after uh, you, you so choose to approve this um, rezoning. We, we'd come back and, and get specific um, uh, agreements on that through through ARC, and that's scheduled in for January. Um, again, uh, it's a farm frame vernacular uh, house with a metal roof, lap siding, all the things that. Uh, this is part of Tampa Heights um, embraces. Just quickly, this would be the, what the, again, the uh, studio apartments with, with the garage. Um, <clears throat> so, the staff report again, uh, um, uh, we have reviewed it, reviewed it. We would make all the noted corrections between first and second reading. Um, to make some of these cleanup items. Um, same thing with natural resources. Again, I spoke about transportation and, and, and why I, um, they said it as an ins, incons, inconsistent, which I again believe is uh, really when you only need seven, not nine parking spaces, we have provided eight. Uh, also, the, all the considerations on your uh, staff report, I think we meet all, all of those considerations. We meet the fabric and the surrounding area of the Tampa Heights Historic District. We have similar density and zoning of the area. We have a two townhouse style free simple project. Uh, we will promote the quality of infill housing in, a, in an area of the city where additional dwelling units is desperately needed and uh, utilize underdeveloped vacant land. <clears throat> So all the waivers that we have are, are technical in nature and do not adversely affect the adjacent neighbors. So in conclusion, the project is using vacant un undeveloped land, density developed, a compatible project in scale, density, design, and aesthetics that confirms, conforms to the goals of the neighborhood at large in a Tampa Heights historic district. I would ask that you approve this project tonight. I'm happy to answer any questions, and I believe we have some neighbors here to speak on behalf of the project. Any uh Questions for the applicant? If I may, sure. Thank you very much. I, uh, I'm looking at the site plan here. The parking <coughs> is the for both the main 
uh, building and the two out back. The parking is underneath the two studios and studios in the rear. So I have uh, two, two um, parking spaces within the garage, then a third adjacent to the garage. We have enough room to do that. And then I have a, also a ribbon drive on Palm Avenue with, a, with, with two uh, tandem spaces here for a total of eight spaces. Okay, thank you. Uh, the, the, um, the entryways off the alley on Studio One and Studio Two, how far is that from the end of the building to the south to the alleyway itself? So we have a 10 foot setback um, for vehicular um, turning radius as required by transportation. Then uh, this, this studio is 24 feet deep. So uh, the, the beginning of that is about uh, 30, 32 feet. But a 10 foot apron. 10 foot apron is from, from, from here to the, to the improved alley, correct? Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. Anyone else? Thank you, sir. Anybody from the public to speak on this item? There are no registered speakers for this item. I see some folks coming up. <laughs> Those folks been sworn in are here to speak on this item? I have five. I have five I, persons here from the public that would like to speak on this item, and they've all been sworn in. Thank you, Ms. Allen. You're welcome. State your name for us, sir. Hello, my name is Kevin Lee. Uh, I live at 505 East Palm Avenue, and I own 408 East Palm Avenue, uh, which is located to the north of the property we're discussing. So I fully support this project. Um, yeah, I think it's a great idea for the neighborhood to uh, enhance and develop empty lots. Any questions? No, sir, thank you. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening, sir. You stay Hi. Today? My name is Michael King. I live at 2102 North Central Ave. It's approximately a block from this uh, proposed project. Um, I'm just here to support the project to let you know that we're excited about our neighborhood. It's progressing quickly. Um, and we're excited to, to bring in some new families and, um, and some, new, some new development into the, into the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hello, my name is Renee King. I also reside at uh, 2102 North Central Avenue. I'm excited about this project as well. I think it um, architecturally fits the neighborhood and they'll get more families in. So I'm, I'm approving of this project. Thank you. Um, good evening, my name is Edward Bembry. I live approximately one block and a half away from the proposed project. Um, I too uh, concur with the what what's about to be built, and um, and approve and hope that um, we have other projects like this in our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening. My name's uh, James Lewis. I live at 311 East Amelia Avenue in the Tampa Heights neighborhood. Uh, my wife and I walk through the area uh, near this project almost on a daily basis. And uh, we're very excited about what's happening down there, what's been approved, what's been proposed. And we think that this, uh, this particular project will be a very big asset to that area as we start to uh, improve the neighborhood. So we're very much in favor of it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hi, my name is Cedric Fluker. I live at 401 East Ross Avenue. And I'm the applicant and just want to know if there's any questions you guys have for me. No questions, sir. Thank you very much. All right, are there any other speakers? Uh, any raised speakers, Madam Clerk? Let, let me just ask no. one question. On, on the studios, what size uh, studios are you building over the garages? Yeah, uh, Ralph Schuler, agent for the applicant. We are doing a one bedroom, approximately 620 square foot um, unit above the garage. So then in essence, you got one, two, three, four structures on a lot, 8,902 feet, correct? Uh, 8,908. Well, there, there, there are two, stru yes, 88, the square footage is correct. There are two structures. There, there are uh, a single family semi detached in the front, and then the garages are attached uh, also, and then they share a common party wall. 
So there are two structures um, with four units. I hope they don't have any visitors. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Mr. Cedro. Yes, and do, are you, do you know if there is uh, street parking on the right of way of, of Palm Avenue? Uh, there's no street parking on Palm Avenue currently because there is a, uh, a median. I think eventually it's proposed to, for the trolley to go down Palm Avenue. Um, but we do have sufficient street parking along uh, Central. And of course, there's a lot of street parking currently um, south and, and, and west of this, pr this project. But um, as the city develops, you know, parking problem is, I think, is, a, is a eventually going to be a, um, something that we'll all deal with. But I don't believe we have an issue with parking on this project at all. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right. Question. Mr. Dingfield, you recognize. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, do we have uh, transportation staff on the line? Mr. Chairman, great minds think alike. Yes, sir. Beat me to it. Beat me to it. Hey, Jonathan. Um, Mr. Scott, um, so, you know, I guess uh, they're asking for a waiver on that one space. Um, does transportation feel strongly about that? Uh, um, is, is as the petitioner has has suggested um, is there an opportunity for a guest uh, not necessarily on Palm but around the corner on Central or some of the other nearby streets I mean there's street parking I mean as long as they don't park in front of no parking sign and close to stop signs and all that other stuff but uh, I think the applicant did a pretty good job of trying to maximize whatever parking he could on the site it's just that he has you know four units and each unit had to have two spaces in the visitor parking. But I thought he did a pretty good job of trying to get as many parking spaces as he could on there. But uh, we, we do, we're, we're, we're objecting to the parking waiver. Just as a matter of formality that, that it doesn't, yeah, I mean, it, could it doesn't overflow. meet, it doesn't meet the code. So you're <laughs> objecting, right? Yeah. I mean, it could cause overflow to the neighborhood potentially, you know, if someone had a, a guest, a couple of guests or whatever, but uh, have you heard anything? Know, have you heard anything from the neighborhood uh, in response to this petition? I haven't heard anything. No one's uh, contacted me on this one. All right. Thank you, John. Mm -hmm. Second. Mr. Mascalco moves close. Mr. Moran is second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Motion carried. All right, Mr. Guerra, uh, rub your eyes. Are you okay to take number uh, four? Boy? Yes, sir. I will, Mr. Chair. It's my pleasure to uh, move an ordinance being presented for first reading consideration ordinance rezoning property in general vicinity of 411 East Palm Avenue in the city of Tampa, Florida, more particularly described in section one from zoning district classification PD plan development, plant storage and retail to PD plan development, residential single family, semi detached and residential studio dwellings providing an effective date. All right, Mr. Beer uh, has moved it. Mr. Miscalco is second. Roll call. Carlson. Yes. Maniscaco? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Citro? No. Miranda? No. Dinkfelder? Yes. And Goods? Yes. Motion carried with Citro and Miranda voting no. Second reading and adoption will be held on November 4th at 9.30 a.m. Thank you very much. All right. I have number five. Thank you, Council. Annie Barnes, Development Coordination. Item number five is REZ 2174. The subject property is located at 2907 and a half North Boulevard and 2909 North Boulevard. The request is to rezone the property from RS50, residential single family, to PD, planned development, to allow for development of residential single family detached dwellings. I'll turn over the presentation to the Planning Commission, and after their pres presentation, I'll conclude mine. Jennifer Moore with the Planning Commission. This is, um, as Annie stated, REZ 2174. This is located in the central Tampa Planning District within the Tampa Heights Building Village as well. This is the um, an aerial of the subject site. We have some offices along this portion of North Boulevard. Graham Elementary is located to the east of the site. Um, and further east of the site, we do have some single family detached housing. I would also note that Plymouth Park is Plymouth Playground is located within a half mile of this, a quarter mile of the subject site, and this is an evacuation route D. Um, the area, the future land use is residential 10 
to the north it's residential 20 that's that blue or that brown color and then further north is suburban mixed use six that's the light pink color that, that allows some infill office uses um, south of the subject site is more residential 20 at plaza place and west warren avenue um, so the planning commission did find this consistent with the comprehensive plan the residential 10 feature land use designation um, promotes this type of development pattern and this would as well asking for two single family detached units which is exactly what the what the land use category is calling for um, this would allow for an overall density of 9.06 units per acre which is consistent with the density that we would anticipate under the residential 10 future land use designation um, as always the tampa comprehensive plan encourages new housing on vacant or unutilized land to ensure that adequate supply is available for Tampa's growing population. And that is what this is proposing before you today. So I'm available for any questions and I will turn it back over to Annie. Thank you. Ms. Bullock, what's the average size of those lots in that area? I can't, uh, like the width or the length? Both. Um, I would have to look at Annie. I, I would defer to Annie on that. Yeah, so so Annie Barnes, Dolan Coordination. Um, I'm going to go over uh, the conforming lot map that we did an analysis of um, when I in my presentation. Oh, so any, that that any, should give you a better idea. That's fine. Any questions for Ms. Malone? All right, you're up, Annie. Thank you, Council. I'm going to share my screen. Got it. Alrighty, can you see my screen now? Can you see it? Great. Uh, again, the applicant is proposing to rezone 2907 and a half North Boulevard and 2909 North Boulevard from RS50 to residential uh, residential single family to PD plan development to allow uh, development of residential single family detached dwellings. Uh, the applicant is requesting uh, two waivers. The first waiver requested is to allow a reduction in aisle width from 24 feet to 13 feet. And the second waiver is to allow a reduction uh, in the location, um, the location of the structural edge of the vehicular entrance of a two car garage setback from 10 feet to three feet. So uh, the site is comprised of lots 18 and 19, block D of WC Black's second edition corrected map subdivision, platted in 1918, shown here in red. Uh, here's the survey of the property, uh, approximately 9,600 square feet in size or uh, 0.22 acres. So here's the uh, 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 conforming lot map that I was uh, discussing earlier. Uh, there was an analysis of 441 total lots. Uh, staff identified that 15% of the lots in the study area, 67% of the subject block, 73% of the block of North Boulevard, and 66% of the block face are lot widths of 49.99 feet or less. Um, staff finds the proposed uh, lots measuring 40 feet in width as historically platted consistent with the uh, existing development pattern. Uh, here is the site plan provided, showing vehicular access uh, provided from the alley on the north side. And uh, these are the elevations of the proposed uh, residential single family detached dwellings and accessory garages. Uh, as you can see here, this is an aerial map with the surrounding zoning. They're a mixture of residential and office uses in the immediate area. Property located west and, north, and across North Boulevard is zoned uh, residential office and developed with an office use. Property south of the site is zoned R, uh, residential office as well and developed with a single family use. Property directly north of the site is zoned PD and developed with a business professional office. And property east of the subject site is zoned RS50 and developed with single family residential uses. So here's a picture of um, the subject site as it is now. And this is a picture of the property looking south on North Bull Boulevard Avenue. Hey, stop. Could you go back to that last oh, photo? Yes. So the subject site is on the left in the fenced area. The, the one before that. Oh. That's the lot there, right? That is correct. All right. Thank you. Mm-hmm. No problem. 
uh, shown here is property located across the street from the subject, to, uh, subject site along North Boulevard. And uh, this is facing the other way um, along northward, northwest on North Boulevard as well. Uh, shown here, you can see a bit of the subject parcel um, with the adjacent um, uh, home next to it. And here are some of the offices that were described earlier um, and the site located on the right. Uh, this is the alley currently as it runs behind um, facing northward. northward. Um, and then again, here is a, a office uh, across the street. It is two, story in, two stories in size, but set back quite a bit. Again, this is the alley um, facing south, so um, from both sides, you can see the alley. Uh, in accordance with policy 9.38, the proposed lots measuring 50, 40 feet in width are consistent with the existing development pattern. The proposed use and lot size are compatible. The requested waivers could result in a safety concern that could create an adverse impact on the immediate neighborhood. The massing and the height of the proposed two-story two structures on lots measuring 40 feet in width is too large, especially in a neighborhood comprised of smaller one-story structures. Therefore, development uh, review and compliance staff has reviewed the application and finds the overall request inconsistent. That concludes my report. I'm available for any questions you might have. Any questions for staff? And you just take me back to that first photo again. I'm just in sure. my mind. I, that area just coming in my mind. That that lot is just bothering me. You know? Can you see it now? Yeah, I can see it. Great. And we're looking to propose put two two-story dwellings on this property. Is that correct? That is correct. Mm. The lot is a total of 80 feet wide. That is correct, as originally platted. So if I can go back in my presentation, I can show you the originally platted lots. So here's a survey showing here, and then these are the, the historically platted lots. Any other questions, gentlemen? All right, I guess we'll hear from the applicant. Good evening. Mr. Chairman and members of City Council. I'm John LaRocca, representing the owner applicant, John and Alexandra Diaz, owners of the property. I have been sworn in. Thank you, sir. All the details associated with this rezoning case have been thoroughly described uh, by the City's Development Coordination presentation and the Planning Commission. I'm not going to repeat everything that's in the report. The staffs always do a very thorough job. And again, I will not reiterate all of them. I do want to address and respond to the matters of inconsistency described in the report. Regarding the development coordination staff's findings of concern related to the width of the alley access, this is an existing alley in a plat that was uh, created in 1918. There are some homes, uh, obviously, that access or are located on the alley uh, from historical purposes and reference and development but it is an existing situation and we're trying to design and introduce redevelopment to the area as is occurring throughout the area in the broader neighborhood as you're quite familiar with in this particular case we're trying to accommodate and best uh, design a product that is uh, very marketable uh, in, in that part of the city as our uh, environs in the urban area are being re-examined and rediscovered. Um, there's a lot of other examples of this in the community and what we are proposing to do is we understand those dimensional limitations in the alley where the lots and parking garages are proposed. The lots do front on North Boulevard which is a functional arterial street. Alleys, when available, are usually an appropriate and acceptable means and alternative access for residential uses that front on arterial roads. And most people would prefer to have alley access if you can make it work. The applicant seeks this waiver from the standard dimensional requirements 
to recognize the existing conditions, but provide at the time of permitting, as has been discussed with staff, um, acceptable means and methods to minimize limitations to the vehicular movement and visibility to include, but not be limited to, the installation of safety mirrors, uh, study and possibly establish a one-way flow because we believe, obviously this is new development, but uh, as the area redevelops, uh, there may be other uh, a continued <coughs> access and need for use of that alley and as potentially establishing a one-way flow if that makes uh, sense is something that the applicant is willing to explore with the city as an option. Uh, and, uh, and possibly adjust the garage building placement in final design to best accommodate safety in accordance with the city's uh, review and approval. Um, therefore, we believe a, some type of waiver to recognize uh, what would be a, appropriate accessory garage parking in what will be a modernly placed and constructed structure um, is appropriate and waivers uh, uh, are justifiable in that regard. But again, with the assumption that we can work out some, some solutions that are satisfactory at the time of permitting. Um, the other inconsistency of regarding massing and height with regard to construction on these two lots, the, in your packet, uh, you sh there, uh, and I, I, I know there are site plans that were uh, illustrated on the screen earlier. These are two existing platted lots of record that are 40 feet wide. The two structures that are proposed on the lot are uh, 26 feet wide and uh, have been developed elsewhere successfully and marketable in that particular regard. Uh, the uses and the intensity of use, the density of use would be consistent with the adopted comprehensive plan. Um, many of the lots in the study area surrounding that area are developed at uh, and, and created at less than 49.99 feet. Uh, it's, it would not be inconsistent with the development pattern and, and specifically, and I have on the, the overhead, the uh, buffer map that we utilized that best depicts the property's location and the, and the uh, property owners that were notified with this rezoning uh, within the 250 feet. Uh, I will note, out, note that while I didn't bring examples or pictures of that, the property on the east side of Boulevard in the block south of West Plaza at the bottom of the map is being developed with attached townhouses of, uh, of course, attached and more dense in terms of their character and interface with the neighborhood and their frontage and area on the street. And again, another example of the type of development that's occurring in the area. With that said, more specifically, the property is located on an arterial road with a mix of residential and office uses located on the edge of, of the platted neighborhoods as you move farther east and farther west of Boulevard. Um, the, uh, the broader community and neighborhoods surrounding this property are all experienced renewed infill and redevelopment with a mix of architectural designs in both one and two story structures. Uh, some that are in the planning and development stage now, others that are just beginning constructions, others that have been built. The fact that the, these two lots are on Boulevard and we are attempting to provide through this process and the waiver that we seek access through the alley, we believe uh, would allow once developed as indicated in these plans, something that would be in fact compatible and consistent with the neighborhood. The rezoning as presented in the PD site plan supports many of the policies of the comprehensive plan as detailed in the planning commission's analysis and report which you have with you. As you know, rezonings are to be consistent with the goals, objectives, and policies of the comprehensive plan. It's my opinion that the request is consistent with the character of the buildings in the area because of the two-story height and massing being consistent, meeting acceptable structural setbacks. The proposal is comparable and compatible with the development pattern along North Boulevard and is consistent with the long-range development pattern encouraged under the residential 10 future land use category. That being, in the case of North Boulevard, uh, a mixture of uses that would not be incompatible with two-story structures. The applicant owner agrees with the revisions requested as outlined in revision sheet number six, uh, page number six of the staff report, and intends to make such site plan revisions between first and second reading. With that, I conclude my comments and respectfully request your support and approval. If necessary, with any particular details, John Diaz, the owner applicant, 
is here this evening can answer any specific questions with regard to what is being proposed uh, with design and structure and the market that he is seeking to uh, uh, market these properties to. Thank you. Any questions? Distinctly recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. LaRocca. Um, just a couple of, of, of things. Um, number one, uh, uh, couldn't help but notice the big tree uh, in, in the middle behind the fence. Mm -hmm. uh, looks like it looks like it's being subject to removal as part of the PD request. Right. Um, Correct. I could ask staff, or I could ask you, uh, if you wish, uh, for the status of that tree and what condition it's in, et cetera. I, it looks like it's just, you know, uh, I mean, I don't know. There might be other trees, but it looks like there's one larger one. Yeah. I, I don't, all I, from our perspective, what has been reviewed, there's nothing, there, it's not grand trees, and it, it, it is, there are mitigation based on the trees that are to be removed. Let right, me ask maybe, Let me ask staff if, mm -hmm, if, correct. if we have any staff speaking to the trees. Hi, yes, Aaron Mayer, Development Coordination for Natural Resources. Hi, Aaron. Good evening, Council. Uh, so, yeah, that is a 21-inch laurel oak and it does have um, decay fungus on the root flare. So we are in support of removal of that tree. Right. And okay. the most of the a, other trees on the site are- I'm sorry, I'm sorry, does it have a grade or a condition or numbers? It was or, graded, yes, it was rated C9. So hazardous tree. Okay, all right, thank you very much. And if I may, Mr. Dingfeller, I, I, I didn't really concentrate on <laughs> on uh, having the tree details. And thank you, Aaron, for, for answering those questions. But uh, they were never, the trees were never an issue other than compliance with the code as we move forward. Okay, and then uh, the other question, um, Ms. LaRocca, is perhaps a, li a little more as aesthetic than, than uh, but, but um, I'm just curious, when I look at the west elevations facing Boulevard, um, is there a sidewalk uh, along there already? There, there is a sidewalk on Boulevard, yes. Okay, so it looks like on one of the houses, I can't tell which one, um, when I look at the elevation sheet on page two, it, it appears that one of them has a, a fairly good sized porch, you know, facing Boulevard, which of course we always want to, I, I know you and council always want to encourage front porches for, for numerous reasons that we don't need to get into tonight, but it, but it appears the other one is, is a rather small little, you know, just the door opening and a cover, a cover, but really not a, a porch you can sit on and enjoy conversing with your neighbors, etc. So, although I, I appreciate the fact that you want a little diversity from one house to the next, instead of cookie cutters, you know, being the same, I, I just was curious as to why why the developer would choose choose not to have a, a good sized front porch there. Okay, um, if you don't mind, let me ask uh, John Diaz, the owner applicant who happens to be a builder, uh, address that. Uh, okay. And I believe he's willing to take that into consideration. And, and if you it, guys if have both been design. sworn? Yeah, I, yes, John, I've speak for yourself, but go ahead. Uh, yes, I've been sworn in. Your name. Uh, John Diaz, uh, good evening. You heard the question, Mr. Diaz? I did. I did. So we were trying to do something where it's a, uh, uh, where we're recognizing the past and the, the uh, present, right, uh, or the future. So we do, we did, to your point, want to avoid bringing in two cookie cutter homes. So we had one that's a little bit more modern, one that's a little bit more classic. Uh, as far as the front porch community, we understand the importance in Tampa Heights uh of of having the front porch we actually have side porches and what we're considering is whether uh we have the the gates uh held back from the side if you look you'll see that both house have both houses will have like a side porch so we're kind of thinking perhaps more like in the shade the uh, facing the west side uh is they're going to be facing the sunset and so we just didn't want just didn't really think people would be sitting there in the sun, so we have those uh, side porches for them to enjoy. So that's let's see. So that's your north, your north elevation on one, and your correct. Okay. 
All right, well, I, I mean, we don't have a requirement for front porches. It just seems like, uh, especially with the, uh, the way the code is written, there's, you know, there's opportunities to actually even intrude in the front yard setback, uh, you know, with front porches. So I, I just hope you're aware of that and, and uh, maybe next time. We'll certainly take it into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Chair, if I you, may. You recognize sir. My, my concern <clears throat> is the alleyway. Uh, with a vehicle being uh, 15 to 16 foot long, you have a three foot apron from the garage to the alleyway. Wait, and the, oh, the alleyway is, how many feet is that? 18 foot? The, the alley is uh, 10 feet. 10 feet. So mm -hmm. including the apron and the alley, you are, you've only got 13 feet there. My concern is the entrance and the exits for the two-car garage on in and out of that alley. That is a major concern of mine. So I, I, I just want to let you know that right up front. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Anyone else? Mr. David, you reckon? Yeah, and Mr. Citra, um, it's a, a, a good question, and I'm glad you brought it up about the, about the alley because staff you know, the, they're asking for a waiver from our code requirement um, in regard to the three feet, or it's supposed to be what, 10 feet, John? And, and it's uh, back down to three feet. So my question is, is how long an alley is that? And how many homes, how many homes arguably would be, would be utilizing it, um, you know, before they get out to a, to a street? And, and uh, you know, because I think that's, you know, there's some alleys that are, you know, uh, that? 20 houses long and maybe used by both sides and you got a lot of a lot of alley traffic and that sort of thing. But in this particular neighborhood, it seems like you only have a limited number of, of possible homes that would be using that alley. Well, I mean, based on the the uh, property map, you can see that there are approximately a three, six, uh, can you eight, switch to the overhead, it, please? Uh, yeah, switch to the overhead. There are eight uh, homes on the east side. Not all are using them as alleys. Those are closed fences. Um, the west side has a mixture of uses, and not everyone, and I don't think there is actually any alley use backing up to that alley right now, John. Are you aware of any? No, just this one corner. Just the very corner lot at the northeast corner of Plaza and Boulevard. I, I guess our perspective at this point is, um, obviously, John Diaz is a developer of this type of home and he is involved with others that are of this character where where older areas are being redeveloped with narrow alleys and it is a concern of ours what we'd like to do I mean we're willing to set back another 10 feet we're but giving the property owner a backyard rather than creating uh, all driveway space to the rear of the property mm -hmm. you know whether it's 10 feet or we add another five feet and we can come up with some solutions I've been I'm, I'm not a traffic engineer I'll state that for the record but I, I do understand that while there are standard code requirements and the waivers that we are seeking are because of inconsistency with or non-compliance with those standards the we want to be able to find some solutions as we develop the site with regard to other alternatives to protect safety and visibility for cars getting in out. I think it's, it's safe to understand and trying to be, you know, play the devil's advocate as someone who would buy a home and these are not gonna be, um, you know, they're, they're gonna be standard homes that the, I keep saying the market is interested in buying young families that are looking for three bedroom, two bath homes and, and, and a proper access in a situation like this in a more urban environment. And they want to be able to get in and out of their property. I mean, anybody understands that. So we're trying to do something that's safe and adequate, but at the same time offer some green space in the rear yard based on where these properties are located. And, and um, you know, what I, 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 we're willing to do, and John can agree to this, is we're willing to look at alternatives I've indicated, and I can write that into any revisions to the, um, to the, the, the conditions to indicate that we'd look at opportunities including greater setback to achieve the best possible solution if that were to be mixed with the, the backup mirrors, the bollards, the uh, other factors that would go into designing this to meet at least a much safer and accessible environment. That, that's, I mean, that's the easiest way I can answer the question right now. 
we're open to doing some things rather than immediately just giving up all the backyard to push everything back and have all pavement and driveway understanding that that's important to have to be able to get in and out of those garages but we were led to believe early on and i'm not saying that, that that's a solution i'm not speaking for jonathan who i know you're 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 on this uh, uh meeting if you will um online but maybe you can address that we're looking at other ways to to solve the problem i'd, I'd like to be able to state that in the record so that uh, we can work with staff at the time of permitting Mr. Randy, recognize that. thank you mr chairman mr laroca thank you very much uh as i see this this is your property is facing to the west correct? west that's Please. correct mm -hmm. and and there are some problems on North Boulevard. It's, it's a highly traveled road at, uh, at speed, sometimes a little higher than, than we'd like. And uh, it's a very road that's been used for many, many purposes. Uh, all the way to Osborne Avenue, turns around, goes back to Florida or anywhere you want. And uh, so I understand why you can't have and appreciate you can't have nothing in the front. You got to have your parking in the back because if not, it'd be really chaotic. Uh, so the alleyway you sit uh, your property, the first unit would be, I think, three properties down. If you look at the you know, 40-foot lots, I'm just taking a guess. And then to your south, you have the correct. larger part of the alley. Am I correct? Correct. So uh, I don't know if uh, there's some things that you can do. I, I'm not suggesting them. But even in this garage, when you leave our city council parking, uh, <laughs> we finally put a 2995 uh, mirror there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from Kmart and it works real well yeah. <laughs> uh, you can see what's coming on the left side of you because right. you have a blind spot when you come out you don't know if somebody's on a baby with a stroller or somebody one of them mopeds or people walking and it, it saved a lot of problems so I, I would suggest uh, something in the that you could see both sides of the alley in the back could be some of your solution I appreciate between well, first and second reading if this goes forward that you made those concessions to yeah. make some and, and, I, the, uh, and I will right. state for the record, uh, uh, Mr. Miranda, in regard to your comments, that there is reference. It's just in part of the revisions in, in uh, between first and second reading, we need to move that language around. But it, right now we have in the plan a statement that says at the time of permitting, the applicant will present evidence to assure backup visibility through acceptable means and methods such as safety mirrors is one example. I went further and I'm willing to go further to say we want to look at any and all methods to do that. And we, we are making the assumption that the alley as it continues to be utilized, whether this becomes the first one with regular use, causing regular use, this situation, and others that are being developed in the area may be open up. There's, I understand some under current standard individual lot on the street behind us on Woodrow, I believe some new construction that's that's going through the normal permitting process and they may want to have access. I don't know what they've designed, but they're not on an arterial. Uh, we recognize that the alley will have to be improved in putting mirrors and coming up with a variety of solutions. We're willing to do that and participate. And I will, uh, with staff's advice and coordination, I will make sure I add that to anything on the notations and edits between first and second reading should and be approved. I would imagine tonight. some of those houses that are there now are pushed back and they may be ingress and egress out of North Boulevard. Right. I'm, I'm not sure. Right. Correct. Mr. Citro, then Mr. Dinkley. Do we have someone for transportation? Uh, Annie Barnes, Development Coordination. Um, I believe Jonathan Scott is on uh, yes. the Thank line as well. Thank um, you. Mr. Scott, can you give me the reason why the uh, transportation uh, found this inconsistent? We found inconsistent due to the backup uh, from the garage, just like you're all talking about. It's a, it's a little bit of tight backup there, you know, for a vehicle to, to back out safely. It's a little bit uh, difficult. You know, if you have a F-150 or something, you know, that, that car needs a 24-foot turning radius. So unless you have a smaller car, that, that's kind of a, that was our concern on that one. I know you can, like the applicant was talking about, you can, there are things you can do to make it easier to back up, but uh, we had recommended, uh, you know, to push it back, you know, to the 10 feet, but they left it at the three, but. Uh, okay, so Mr. Scott, it was, it was combination of alley size and that apron size of the, um, of the driveway into the part, into the gar garage, excuse me. Yeah, they can use the full width of the alley as the backup. You have a 24-foot backup, so they have uh, 
10 foot for the alley and just three feet to the vehicle entrance. So they're, they're asking for a waiver from 24 to 13 feet, okay. which is a little bit of a tight back, but that's what our concern was. Thank, thank you very much, Mr. Scott. Mr. Chair, if I can go back to the applicant, please. Yes, sir. Yes. Um, you, you know, I, I, I don't redesign from the dais, but I'm just letting you know now that this is a major concern of mine. And uh, as, as the competent substantial evidence that you are presenting right now, I, 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 can't, I can't vote yes for this if something changes between now and second reading, if it does pass then uh, I, will, I will look at it further. I hope you understand. Thank you. Mr. Dayfield, you're right um, So I think we, we sort of have conflicting, um, conflicting issues here, um, Mr. LaRocca. The, um, on the one hand, I would hope uh, that we all see the value of, of rear-loaded garages um, on the alleys. Uh, that's what the alleys were there for. You know, originally it was for service alleys, and and isn't it wonderful not to have a big double double car garage um, on the front of this house? This house is going; these houses are going to be lovely, um, you know, facing Boulevard without big double garages. Um, on the flip side, Mr. Citra's articulated very well that uh, there is there there might be some safety concerns, and I think what I heard you say, John Larocca, was that. Uh, that y'all might be amenable to, to a compromise because you do want to provide your buyers with as large a backyard as possible. And I saw a reference to possible swimming pool. Um, so, you know, with that said, would you uh, be amenable as a compromise instead of three feet uh, to five feet? The requirement's 10 feet. And if we split the baby, that's five feet. And I, and I think that you know, if I lived in if I lived in that situation and I wanted to park in that garage, I would back in every time. And then, I mean, I know we can't require that as a condition, but I think that's a reality. Is and I've seen that in Hyde Park where people back into these kind of garages, and then that way when they come out, they're coming out forward and they have a lot better visibility. So, so I think there are some practical solutions. But putting that aside, we can't put that on the site plan, obviously. Um, but would you would you be amenable to a five foot compromise? I, I think I've just spoken with Mr. Diaz, and we've talked about this before we made our presentation this evening. I and I again I know enough about the PD uh, zoning, and I know we need to be as specific as we we can. I I, I believe we are willing to accept a, a going from a, a waiver from the three to the five. Feet. Um, we still want the opportunity, obviously, to look at other uh, uh, ways to even make the accessibility to those garages and that alley uh, work and, well, and satisfy the transportation reviewers for compatibility with the code. Right. So well, yes, clearly, I agree. I mean, the, we we will agree. If you if you agree to the five feet tonight, yeah. then then that would be hopefully you know how we all move forward. Right. But you're bound by that. Right. Now if Correct. you do things over and above. Yeah. Correct. You know, in terms of bollards or mirrors or what have you, um, you know, that, that's all fine right. and good. Okay. So the five so, feet is. So firm. to your question, firm. Mr. Dingfelder and Mr. Citro, on, on your question, we, we certainly agree to that and we are willing in the revision sheet and revisions to the plan between first and second reading to make that change to show a setback off that so alley so of two five feet we'll instead of the three. Ms. Shelby, you recognize that Mr. Miranda. Thank you. I just wish, um, Council, if you would uh, inquire of the staff, Ms. Barnes, as to that um, change, whether what is being discussed is going to be possible between first and second reading, just so you could see whether it can be done logistically. Ms. Barnes? Um, Annie Barnes, Development Coordination. So the first request would allow a reduction um, in uh, aisle width from 24 feet to 11 feet. And the second um, waiver would be to allow reduction in the uh, location structural edge of a vehicular entrance of the two-car garage setback from 10 feet to five feet. Um, but uh, I would like uh, Jonathan Scott to, um, with transportation, to confirm as well. So we haven't really, we haven't really had much correct. discussion about the 24 feet to 11 feet. So tell, I don't know really know if I even understand how that comes into play. 
Yeah, so they have uh, 10 feet for the alley. And then if you add the five to the property line to the vehicle entrance, that's 15 feet. So it'd be from 24 to 15 would be the new waiver. Got it. And um, the structural edge of the garage is typically uh, 10 feet. So they'd be going from 10 feet to five feet. So that'd be the, the two modifications that the, that just to confirm Manny had those right. So Mr. Chairman, if I could, just to wrap that up. So effectively by sliding the garage back an additional two feet from as instead of where it's designed today, um, then the new waiver request would be from 24 feet to 15 feet and from 10 feet to five feet. Mr. Jonathan Scott is nodding yes for the record. That is, that is correct. I don't know if you want me to answer, but that is correct. And the applicant, this is John LaRocca, the applicant concurs with that. And we are assuming we, we're in agreement here that that change can be made between first and second reading. We will, we will make that change. Mr. Randy, you recognize Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. LaRocca, Mr. Diaz, and council members. Just thinking through the future. If this was 2031, your car would tell you <laughs> anywhere you want to be. If you're backing up <laughs> sideways, up or down, it has cameras. You'll see the whole thing. So I'm just thinking, I'm not, I'm not saying applicable that to this petition, but I was just here sitting, I said, what would happen with all these electric cars? You won't need these setbacks for the cars because they're going to tell you everything. I mean, they have them now that does that. Unfortunately, I have mine parked because it's got a bad battery. But uh, thank you very much. I just thought about that. I said I had to share that comment with you. Well, I, I haven't spoken yet. I guess my... Uh, my concern was the setback with the alley, but my, my biggest concern knowing that area is the height of the proposed project, uh, the different look on the porches, and the consistency of the, the pattern of the neighborhood. Uh, I know that area very well, and th there's not too many two-story buildings in that stretch right there. So that's a concern of mine, and when I, that's why I keep looking at the photograph of that lot. When I look at that lot, I look at the house that's adjacent to it. And we'll uh, see if staff can put that back up, just so uh, council members can see what I'm talking about. Andy, Andy that, Barnes, development Andy, put that develop photo, coordination. Put that photo, can I please yeah. share my screen? Yes, you can. Thank you. Also, um, while I'm sharing my screen, I want to let you know that uh, the modifications, if any modifications are made uh, to the waivers, they can be done before first and second reading. Thank you. All I'm right, just, can you see my screen? I can see it. Great. And I'm just looking at that lot, and I'm looking at that uh, residential area, and those are all single family homes. My concern is the elevation of two huge uh, buildings in that space overlooking those houses. Uh, that, that concerns me. I'm going to be frank with you. That concerns me. And I, I know this is a, we, 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 affordable housing. Housing is a big thing, but we still have to be mindful of the community. So that, that's bothered me at this point. I just want to uh, make reference to that. I don't know where I'm at on this particular project this time, but that that just uh, bothers me at this particular time. Anyone else? We have to. If I may, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Wells. Uh, Kate Wells, Chief Assistant City Attorney for the Record. There's been some discussion this evening with regard to porches, and I just want to remind um, the City Council that this property is not located within an overlay district or within one of the historic districts. So typically the, the design elements are not uh, before council or would provide a basis for approval or denial of the application. That being said, the issue of massing, uh, Mr. Chairman, which is what you just brought up, um, that is uh, a component that would properly uh, be before council for consideration as you deliberate this. I believe that staff addressed them at their concern with respect to massing um, in the staff report, but I just wanted to caution uh, the council members 
as you deliberate um, to please not focus on design specific issues. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wells. Anyone else for the applicant before I open it up? All right. No more questions for the applicant. Do we have anybody on the second floor to speak on this item? Here comes Eileen. Eileen, your side of development and growth management. There's no one here to speak on this item. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there anyone raised to speak on this item? No raised to speakers for this item. All right. Before you close, Mr. Yep. Brother, you recognize. Thank you. And, um, and you, you'll get the last word. Uh, Mr. Loretta. Okay, thank you. But before you close, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I think your comments are, 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 are well stated. Um, you and I both drive up and down that North Boulevard a, a lot, I'm sure. Um, and, and I would agree with you on the traditional homes along North Boulevard. I will, I will note that there's a lot of pretty big and tall uh, townhomes to, to the south um, toward, toward Columbus more and more. I don't know exactly what the future holds, you know, for this particular, you know, block or so in terms of, of that sort of thing. I have a, I do have a question, and a, it's almost a rhetorical question, but I believe that that these two single-family homes are are 35 feet uh, or less in height. Um, period, because that's that's what our code requires. So you're not asking for any height waivers, sir. Correct. And, okay. And if, okay. And if so, I may, you know, when I have yeah. So, so there, you know, um, I think I think part of the part of what we're seeing, Mr. Chairman, is, is that modern look, and 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 uh, that's different. Uh, but Ms. Wells is, I think, sort of warning us a little bit. Uh, I think I think what Kate said was we could address mass, and scale and size, but but be careful not to look at design and front porches. And I, I appreciate that cautionary uh, statement from her. So anyway, I just wanted to point out to everybody this this is 35 feet, just like every pretty much every other new house in in the city. So development coordination, Andy Barnes. Um, so the difference, though, is this is a 40 foot wide lot, and the standard Euclidean and zoning districts don't allow 40 foot wide lots. So, okay. and you're correct, in RS50, RS60, the max height would be 35 feet. Right. If, if I could just ask, recognize, sir. If it, uh, Martin Shelby, City Council Attorney, if I could just ask staff to qualify with regard to, let's say, a planned development, um, setbacks and um, um, height are not considered waivers, is that correct? Because they're site plan control? I just want to be clear. That is correct. So, so, so a site plan does not necessarily need a specific height waiver. It just sets forth what the height of that project is. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, we uh, had no other folks to speak on this item, and there was nobody ready to speak. Mr. Roker, anything? Any yeah, final comments? Uh, again, uh, Chairman Goods, I, I, I understand and respect your concern, as, and you know that neighborhood very well. With regard to the height and the massing, and, and, and um, Annie's correct also that these are 40-foot lots, but the reality of it is the height of these structures are 31 feet. They don't exceed 35 in height. That's one of the issues. Uh, and if you look at them as individual lots, yes, they're, they're typically smaller or narrower than the standard lots, but the height of the buildings are less than 35 feet, which is the maximum allowed by right. Um, and the setbacks of each of those uh, lots on the side, which are side yard setbacks for structures that are of that height, are seven feet that meet the standard code requirements. Um, so John, one other thing. John Diaz wants to add one more thing. And, and I, and I uh, Mr. Orlando, just to address your, your concern, what made me realize that we can build something like this in this area is that I built a house uh, on a 40-foot wide lot very much uh, uh, right on Francis Street. And that's kind of where uh, we, were, we recognize that it's possible to do this and, and still have the house tie in with the area. Yeah. Well, and so, my, so my comment, just to conclude, uh, I, um, I believe we've had a, a, a vigorous discussion this night on the issues uh, regarding the height and massing, I believe uh, the character, it, you know, new development is always a change. 
um, 40, 45, 50 foot lots. This kind of development is new to the area. There are a lot of yes offices and other homes that are not two stories, but there's a lot of new, new two story homes that are going up in the area. And, and this will, in my opinion, on an arterial road will not be out of character. And that's the point that I made earlier. Thank you very much. And we respectfully uh, ask for your consideration of approval. And again, the one note is we agree, in addition to the waiver sheet on page six, we agree to the waivers associated with the setbacks um, from the alley as, as stated during this meeting. Thank you. Second. Mr. Mascot is moved. Mr. Miranda, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. All right. Uh, Mr. Mascot, I'm in five, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, I know a lot was said, and there's going to be. Uh, is there? There's not a revision sheet. There's. Yes, there is. There is actually, and the stipulations from first to second reading. In addition to the revision sheet, okay. as stated by the applicant, agreed by the applicant, and uh, known by staff. Very good. So I'll clarify that. I have an ordinance being presented for first reading consideration: an ordinance rezoning property in the general vicinity of 2907 and a half and 2901. North Boulevard in the city of Tampa, Florida, more particularly described in section one from zoning district classification RS 50, residential single family, to PD plan development, residential single family, detached, providing effective date with the revision sheet and the uh, stipulations and or um, additions between um, first and second reading as stated by the applicant that's already on record. So it's uh, clear. May I add, if I may? Yes, sir. Uh, that the uh, design of the proposed development is unique and therefore in need of waivers. The request of waivers would not substantially interfere or injure to the rights of others whose property would be affected by the waivers. And there's others. The proposed development is shown as the site promotes and encourages development at its appropriate location, character, and compatibility with the surrounding neighborhood. Proposed use to promote an effective and sustainable use of land and infrastructure. Mr. Maniscalco has moved it. Second. Mr. Moran is seconded. Mr. Dusty, Mr. Hand, Mr. Dean, for the record. Thank you. And just for clarification, uh, in regard to the revision sheet, the, the as stated and concurred to by Jonathan, um, the, the, the revised or, and approved by the petitioner, the revision is 24 feet down to 15 feet for the first waiver and 10 feet down to 5 feet for the second waiver. And Mr. Mr. Loretta, you concur that, with that? That is correct. I think Madam Clerk is writing some stuff down. I see your head down. <laughs> Man, all right, Madam Scalco is moved. I'm ran the second at the roll call. Madam Scalco? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Citro? No. Miranda? Yes. Dinkfelder? Yes. Carlson? Yes. And Goods? Yes. Motion carried with Citro voting no. Second reading and adoption will be held on November 4th at 9.30 a.m. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Item number seven. Thanks so much, Zane Hussein, Development Coordination. Agenda item number seven, case REZ 21-79. The project is a rezoning at 8610 Seminole, 8612 Seminole, and 8619 North Dixon Avenue. Proposed rezoning from RS50 and CG to PD, residential multifamily. I'll now pass it along to Jennifer Malone. Jennifer Malone with your Planning Commission staff. Thank you, Zane. Um, this is 2179. This is in the Central Tampa Planning District, and more specifically, it's in the Sulphur Springs neighborhood. Um, we have a transit stop about a, right across the street, about a quarter mile um, to the north of the site. Cheney Park is about a half mile to the east of the site. It's in evacuation zone E. There's an aerial of the site. Um, Bush Boulevard is located to the north of the site, and then we have Florida Avenue to the West, so both of those are out of the frame, but that's kind of our surrounding area here. Um, then we have the interstate. This is the Yukon Transfer Center that's owned by FDOT to the north. That's a transit stop. We have multifamily in the area. This is the Home Depot in the area. There's commercial uses um, along this portion of East Yukon, but then south of the subject site are single family detached residential. So we kind of clearly see that pattern. And when we look at the future land use map, the future land use of the site is community next to 35. That's the same future land use to the north and the northwest. 
Um, further north of the site is residential 35. That's that multifamily development that I pointed out earlier. And to the south is residential 10. That's where the pattern transitions to the single family detached to the south of the site. So it is, um, it does have this potential for mixed use development on the subject site because of the land use and it has potential for commercial uses and multifamily or a mixture of, of all of that. Um, the, we did find it consistent with the comprehensive plan. I'll also note that the applicant is utilizing floor area ratio in this instance for the dwelling units and they're using an FAR of 0 0.34 this well below the maximum of two that can be considered. Uh, we did look at the existing FARs surrounding the site and it looks like the existing average intensity is a 0.3. So they're consistent when compatible with that existing um, intensity in the area. We did find it consistent with the plan. Um, the planning commission is supportive of the design and how the entrances to units and sidewalks along East Yukon and North Dixon Avenue so there's clear pedestrian entrances and then um, front doors connecting to those sidewalks. We also found that the parking is placed on the rear of the site, which is meeting the intent of those mixed use corridor policies. Um, so again, this is consistent with the contract city form strategy that in, seeks to place housing near transit and employment services, which this is, and um, revitalize the vacant or underutilized lands. So I'm available for any questions and that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Any questions, Mr. Malone? Any questions? All right, we'll hear from staff. Thank you so much, Zane Hussain, Development Coordination. Can I please have control of the screen? Wonderful, thank you. Uh, case REZ 21 79, the applicant and representative is Margaret Rogers. Property address at 8610 8612 Seminole Avenue and 8619 North Dixon Avenue. The proposed rezoning is RS50, Residential Single Family, and CG, Commercial General, to PD, Plan Development Residential Multifamily. There are four waivers requested here. The first to reduce the required parking from 35 spots to 24, which is a 31% reduction. The second waiver is to reduce the required distance between residential buildings from the required 21 feet to 9 feet. The third is to request a payment to the applicable planning tr district tree trust fund for mitigation trees that cannot be planted on site. And the fourth is to reduce the required 350 square feet of green space per unit to 276 square feet per unit. The reduction of green space is subject to the landscape and lieu fees that will be determined at the time of permitting. As you can see here, the uh, property is outlined here in red. The property consists of three parcels here. The site is uh, an area of 24,987 square feet or 0.574 acres. The, go to the next slide. The total building area here out of the two buildings is 8,494 square feet. Building one you have here is 3,094 square feet and building two is 5,400 square feet. Going back, as you see to the north, you'll have a transfer center owned by FDOT. Also, you'll have a Home Depot right here to the north. To the west of the site, you'll have a uh, nonprofit organization uh, facility here, as I'll show in the slides and the pictures coming up. And to the east and to the south, you'll have residential single family, as I'll also show um, in the slides coming up. Vehicular access to the site is on North Dixon Avenue and also on North Seminole Avenue. Oops, right through. As we go along to the site plan here, you'll see that this building, uh, building one is already existing as you'll see in the pictures. All parking is on the surface and also underneath a uh, little covered uh, patio portion here, you'll have uh, also parking for uh, residents. There's a total of 28 dwelling units here. Building one has 10 units and building two has 18 units. As you'll see the unit numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine, ten, 10, and then building two, you have 18. The maximum building height here is 30 feet. Coming to the pictures here, as you'll see, some of the portion of the site is vacant. 
And then also um, along the west side, you'll see the current existing building is building one. To the north of that, you'll see the FDOT transfer center. And also you'll see the Home Depot. Uh, a little bit better picture of the uh, transfer center here to the north. To the south of the site, you'll see the residential single family homes. To the east of the site, you'll also see residential single family homes. And to the west of the site, you'll see the uh, nonprofit organization facility. Based on the uh, review, development review, and compliance staff has reviewed the application and finds the request inconsistent with the City of Tampa Land Development Code. Should it be the pleasure of City Council to approve the application, further modifications to the site plan must be completed between the first and second reading of ordinance as stated on the revision sheet. Thank you. I'm here for any questions if needed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Zane uh, and, and or maybe Kate or whatever attorney we've got uh, in the wings. Um, the, at the bottom, it makes reference to Catholic Charities Tampa Affordable Housing, who I imagine is probably the current, perhaps the current property owner. Ms. Mai can explain that to us. But um, um, are, are there any special uh, conditions or agreements associated with this property as as being affordable housing yes sir yes the same you saying development coordination has not been done in a while but we can do council conditions four conditions in fact uh we can address the number of units the ami percentage the dictation affordability for 30 years and also file for restrictive covenant deed so those things can go for the council conditions so are those are those part of the site plan or is that a separate agreement no, sir, the uh, applicant needs to agree on this. Ms. Wells? This is Kate Wells for the record. Yes, the applicant, um, the application itself indicated that this was an affordable housing project. So um, if the applicant can address um, those details that Zane has highlighted, and then those are conditions that can be added to the site plan between first and second reading. And then of course the restrictive covenant, um, if agreed to, would be recorded um, at permitting. Okay, and I know we're only supposed to say within the limits of, of, of this project, but it, in regard to a more a recent affordable housing project that council saw, there was a whole agreement, side agreement, and, uh, and, and I think it even addressed uh, inf inspections, enforceability, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, is there a reason we wouldn't be doing, doing that or proposing that here in a similar way? In that situation, they were asking for an increase in density from 30 to 35 dwelling units to the acre. So under section 27-140 of our code, they were required to enter into a bonus provision agreement. And that is language that, that we worked out to look at how this would be implemented. Um, and that agreement will come before council next week when you consider that case on second reading. Uh, you know, we can look at, um, what type of language would need to be included in the restrictive covenant to ensure that uh, the program would be operated in a similar fashion and with coordination with our housing and community development. Okay, and Ms. Mai uh, has already been, have, uh, this has already been discussed with the petitioner and representative? Good evening. Uh, no, sir, the timeline has not been discussed but we do agree um, on the conditions. She has not been sworn. Okay. I'm sorry, Mike, I didn't mean to jump, jump right ahead hand? of you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Do you swear or affirm you would tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. All right. And I apologize, Mr. Chairman. Didn't mean to jump ahead. I just, uh, I just wanted to get that affordable housing issue out on the, yeah. out on the floor. You triggered my mind on something. You know, you like, once mind. again. So something was coming. So once again. Go ahead. Go ahead. You recognize that. Ms. Ma, you can make your presentation. Oh, <laughs> good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the City Council. Again, my name is Tu Mai of HTMI Inc. I'm here representing the applicant. As staff has stated, the petition in front of you tonight is a request to rezone three parcels having folio number 099143, 099144, and 099148 
from RS50 and CG to PD. Total land is 0 0.574 acres with a future land use of CMU 35. It is located at the southeastern corner of the intersection of East Yukon Street and North Dixon Avenue. The parcels are in the Sulphur Springs neighborhood and water and sewer provided by the city. Currently, the parcels are owned by Catholic Charities and are as follows. Folio 099143 is zoned CG. The parcel is 0 0.11 acres. It's currently a vacant commercial parcel. Folio 099144 is zoned RS50. The parcel is 0 0.12 acres and is currently a vacant residential parcel. Folio 099148 is zoned CG. The parcel has two existing buildings, one for an office use and the other for a warehouse and storage use. The existing structure fronting North Dixon Avenue will be converted into 10 efficiency units. The existing warehouse and storage will be demolished. A new 3,600 square feet two-story building will be built to provide six efficiency units on the first floor and 12 efficiency units on the second floor. Therefore, the applicant is seeking to rezone the property to PD for 28 affordable housing units for workforce individuals. A little bit about Catholic Charities. Catholic Charities is a nonprofit organization. The organization was founded more than a century ago by men and women who believe that collective efforts of the church to faithfully serve people in need could change the course of poverty in our nation. At Catholic Charities, they help people regardless of their faith who are struggling with poverty and over complex and other complex issues. Catholic Charities makes tangible progress towards providing help and hope to our individuals in the community and across the country. They recognize the growing need to provide affordable housing for the individuals in the workforce. This project is so important for our community because it provides a basic need, which is housing, a roof over these individuals' heads and safe place to lay their heads down at night without the fear of getting kicked out. As stated, the 28 multifamily units are well below the allowable FAR. In addition, the applicant is also requesting four waivers, which Mr. Hussein has stated. We understand that the staff, the transportation staff finds the reduction of parking spaces from 35 to 24 spaces as excessive. However, I'd like to point out that an overwhelming majority of these individuals who will be occupying these units do not own vehicles since they cannot afford it. The future occupants will use public transit. As stated, there is a Yukon transfer station approximately 366 feet north of the subject site. If I could share my screen, um, I have an exhibit. Uh, is it possible to share my screen? Share my screen. Can you help out, Madam Clerk? Can you see my screen? Yeah, just expand it out. Yeah. One more time. Sorry, one second. Can you see it? We can see it. Okay. So as I stated, there is a Yukon transfer station directly across the street from our subject site. There are, there are also four additional bus stops located west of the subject site. As Planning Commission stated, the closest transit stop is within a quarter mile to the west of the subject site at the intersection of North Florida Avenue and West Yukon Street. This transit, this transit stop is served by Hart Route number one, connecting to the subject site in downtown Tampa and the university area. In addition, nearby transit stops serve Hart Route 14 and 16. Lastly, this project we believe supports the goals, objectives, and policies of the Tampa Comprehensive Plan. It would provide more residential housing choices for existing and future population growth, while also creating additional housing opportunities consistent with the compact city form strategy. The subject site is located in proximity to employment opportunities, such as Home Depot, Walmart, Florida Land, office center and amenities such as Cheney, Cheney Park, which is a half a mile east of the subject site and east of the park is Roland Park. There are also, there are also many 
bigger employment centers to the east along East Bush Boulevard, such as Bush Gardens, which is 2.9 miles, and Adventure Island, which is 3.5 miles away. To conclude, we concur with the Planning Commission's findings of consistent as the project uses the limited land resources efficiently and pursues a development pattern that is economically sound as well as maximizes a vacant and underutilized site. We, reflect, we respectfully request your recommendation to approve this zoning based on all the considerations I've presented to you tonight. Thank you for your time and consideration. Any questions for the applicant? All right. No questions for the applicant. Anyone here to, on the second floor to speak on this item? Kate, I'm, I'm sorry. Kate, get your hand up. Thank you. Since um, council has raised the issue of affordable housing and the applicant has indicated that that's in fact what this project is for, that all 28 units will be used for workforce units, um, you know, is in the event that this receives favorable consideration this evening, I would ask the applicant for purposes of the amendments um, to the site plan between first and second reading, uh, if she could state for the record what percentage AMI would um, would be the target for the tenants at this development. I know that when the city council has approved other projects um, where uh, they requested an increase in density, um, the AMI that uh, that was going to be um, address there, it was between 80% and 120%. And I don't know if your client has um, has identified what that percentage is going to be for purposes of workforce housing, but we would like to include that as a condition on the site plan. Ms. Mutt? I can confer, I'm sorry, I can confer with our client to um, address <coughs> the percentage, but I do not have that um, at this time, the percentage. Mm. All right. So, Ms. Wells, um, I don't want to delay this project if we can avoid it, um, but it, it seems to me from all the dialogue, especially from you, that, that, it, that it would be very helpful to have that kind of information um, on the site plan before second reading, or perhaps we can make a reference on the site plan tonight to an attachment that would be perhaps an agreement, an affordable housing agreement uh, or understanding between the city and Ms. Mai's client. Um, I'm just trying to be creative here and, and uh, you know, not, not hold up a good project. But at the same okay. time, at the same time, and I, I want everybody to understand who's listening it's one thing for folks to, and I'm not saying that Catholic Charities or, or Ms. Mai would propose this, but you know, a lot of people come to us and talk about affordable housing, but if we don't codify it and we don't have enforcement mechanisms and other legal constraints, then, you know, there, then there's nothing somebody can do five years later when we realize that it's no longer affordable housing and the project's been sold for market rate. So, and Ms. Mai, you understand, um, I, I'm not saying that's you or your client. Yes, sir. If, if I may, uh, Councilman Dinkfelder, Ms. Mai has indicated on the record that this will be an affordable housing project. If, if it receives favorable consideration this evening, I would ask Council to allow us and staff to work with Ms. Mai and her client to identify the AMI percentage that would then be included um, on a note on the site plan. So it would still be addressed between first and second reading and that requirement would still be included on the site plan uh, before it's certified for your approval on second reading. Good. All right, sounds good. All right, well, anyone on the, uh, we'll move on, on the second floor to speak on the side? Eileen Rosario, Development Growth Management. There is no one here to speak on the side. Thank you. Madam Clerk, anyone raised to speak on the side? No raised speakers. Ms. Miranda has moved to close. Mr. Maniscalco has second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Mr. Carlson, could you do the honor, sir? Yes, sir. I'd um, like to move uh, file number um, REZ 2179 ordinance being presented for first reading consideration ordinance rezoning property in the general vicinity of 8610, 8612 Seminole Avenue, and 8619. 
North Dixon Avenue in the city of Tampa, Florida, more particularly described in section one from zoning district classification RS 50 residential single family and CG commercial general to PD plan development residential multifamily providing effective date, including the uh, changes to be made to site plan for between first and second reading. All right, Mr. Wren. May I add, and I know the second one, Mr. Minister, may I add that the design for the proposed development is unique and therefore in need of waivers, that the request of waivers will not substantially interfere with or injure the rights of others whose property would be affected by the waivers. Also, that the proposed development is shown on the site plan promotes and encourages development that is appropriate in location, character, and compatibility with the surrounding neighborhood, promotes use, proposed use, promotes the efficient and sustainable use of land and infrastructure. All right, let's be moving, Mr. Carlson, with the add-ons from Mr. Miranda. Second. I got the second. Yeah. Second, Mr. Mariscalco. Uh, roll call vote. Miranda. Yes. Dinkfelder. Yes. Carlson. Yes. Maniscalco. Yes. Vieira. Yes. Citro. Yes. And Goods. Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Second reading in adoption will be held on November 4th at 9.30 a.m. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Number nine. Thank you, Council. Annie Barnes, Development Coordination. Item number nine is REZ 2183. The subject property is located at 1511 South Church Avenue. The request is to rezone the property from planned development to planned development to allow uh, development of the property with residen a residential single family detached dwelling. I'll turn over the, uh, over the presentation to the Planning Commission, and after their presentation, I'll conclude mine. Thank you, Annie. Uh, Jennifer Malone at the Planning Commission. Uh, as she stated, this is REZ 2183. Traveling to the South Tampa Planning District for this item, the evacuation zone C, the closest public recreational facility is Clifton Cal Dixon Tennis Center within a half mile of the northwest of the site. And there's a transit stop about 792 feet to the northeast of the site at the intersection of West Neptune Street and South Delivery Highway. So that would that transit stop would just be up here where my mouse is to the to the east of the site. So um, to the east of the site, we also have South Del Neighbor Highway. There's a lot of commercial uses in the area. We have a Publix and a Sprouts nearby, and then some commercial uses along Neptune Avenue. And that's reflected when we look at the site plan. So the um, there's a lot of community mixes 35 to the north and the east. Um, in the west of the subject site that allows for the commercial uses and that mixed use development pattern. But the subject site itself has a residential six future land use category. That's the yellow. Um, the residential six allows for a density of six dwelling units per acre. Um, and when we looked at the overall density, if this is approved, the site would have a density of 5.30 units per acre. So that's within that residential six density that the comprehensive plan um, is seeks and it would be compatible and consistent with that density anticipated under the residential six future land use designation. We also found that the proposed request would allow for development that is similar in form, height, and scale as the surrounding residential uses along this portion of South Church Avenue. Um, and again, the comprehensive plan encourages new housing on vacant and unutilized land to ensure an adequate supply of housing available to meet the needs of Tampa's present and future populations. It's consistent with the plan and the policy direction and the residential six future land use, and I'm available for any questions. Thank you. Any questions for Ms. Malone? All right, we can see that. Thank you, Annie Barnes. I'm going to share my screen. Uh, Annie Barnes, Development Coordination. Uh, the applicant is proposing to rezone 1511 South Church Avenue from planned development to planned development to allow for uh, a residential single family detached dwelling. The applicant is not requesting any waivers. Uh, the site is comprised of the south 10 feet of lot five and all of lot six of rain subdivision platted in 1925. This is the site plan provided, or I apologize, this is the survey provided uh, showing the lot. 
And this is the site plan provided showing the proposed residential single family detached dwelling. Uh, vehicular access is provided from South Church Avenue. Uh, these were the elevations provided by the applicant. Shown here is, the, is an aerial map in the surrounding zoning property directly south of the subject property zone PD and developed with a residential single family detached dwelling. Property directly west of the subject site is located within the RS-75 residential single family zoning district and developed with a single family residence. Property located to the east uh, is located within the commercial general zoning district and developed with a shopping center. Property north of the subject site is owned PD and developed the business professional uh, office. So here's a, a picture of the subject site. This is uh, shown here as property adjacent and south of the subject site along South Church Avenue. And this is a uh, property located east and across South Church Avenue. Uh, this is a picture of property um, uh, adjacent north of the subject site. I apologize, this is the, the property adjacent north of the subject site. This is the um, site east of the uh, property. And then this is uh, the intersection of West Neptune Street and South Church Avenue. Uh, development review and compliance staff has reviewed the application and finds the overall um, request consistent with the city of Tampa uh, code of ordinances, modifications to the site plan must be completed by the applicant between first and second reading of the ordinance as stated in the revision sheet if approving the application, and I'm available for any questions you might have. Any questions for Ms. Barnes? All right, being none, we'll go to the applicant. Robles. Got it. Good evening, Council. Kevin Robles. I have been sworn in. Um, this is a, a, a th first of all, thanks to staff. They did a, a very good job articulating this. And this is a very, very old PD. Um, originally was uh, office, doesn't, doesn't even follow the same uh, codes that we currently use today because there was a code change and a rewrite of the uh, code um, subsequent to this original PD. Um, I really don't have anything to add. We received no public comment nor uh, any comment from the neighborhood associations, and I think staff has kind of explained everything. If I can answer any questions for council, I'll be happy to. Any questions for the applicant? Any questions for the applicant? All right, being done, we'll move anyone on the second floor to speak on the side. I lean on side of development and growth management. There's no one here to speak on this item. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sarah. She's always got a smile on her face, Ms. Randall. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone register to speak on this item? No <laughs> register speakers. Move to close. Ms. Citros, move to close. Mr. Randall, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Mr. Citro, you honor, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Yes, file number REZ 21 83. Ordinance being presented for first reading consideration. Ordinance rezoning the property in the general vicinity of 1511 South Church Avenue in the city of Tampa, Florida, more particularly described in section one from zoning district classification PD plan development general office to PD plan development residential single family detached. Um, <coughs> excuse me, that the uh, petitioners met the burden of proof through competent substantial evidence and that the development as conditioned and shown on the site plan is consistent with the comprehensive plan. There are revisions that need to be done between first and second reading. The density proposed by the development does not exceed the density application anticipated, excuse me, under future land use category and will not alter the characteristic or the development pattern in the portion of the neighborhood pursuant to land use policy 9.2.1 and 9.3.8, uh, providing an effective date. Second. Second by Mr. Maniscalco. Roll call vote. Citro? Yes. Vieira? Maniscalco? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Dinkfelder? Yes. Miranda? Yes. And Gould? Yes. Motion carried with VRB and absent at vote. Second reading and adoption will be held on November 4th at 9.30 a.m. Thank you, Council. Thank you. All right. Well, uh, last item of the evening, number 11, 
Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. You recognize, sir. With regard to item number 11, I think we have some preliminary matters that need to be discussed. So um, I would suggest that we do that before we have staff's introduction and presentation, please. Right. What, what preliminary matters, sir? Uh, I believe the applicant's representative, excuse me, um, uh, has a request. All right. Mr. Chairman, if I could. You recognize, sir. All right. I will, I will save the, uh, the applicant and her, her, their attorney uh, the trouble. Um, Mr. McElhinney is here for the record, and, and I believe uh, Ms. Doucette, the attorney, is here. Uh, Ms. Doucette and her partner, Mr. Loeb, have presented the city with a request that I recuse myself uh, on behalf of uh, Mr. McElhinney and his uh, land use client. And I've carefully reviewed Mr. McElhinney's attorney's request for me to recuse myself from consideration of this application. I'm quite familiar with the statutory and due process requirements regarding quasi-judicial proceedings such as this that must be conducted in a fair and impartial manner. I believe I can be fair and impartial decision maker in this particular case this evening and any other evening in regard to anybody's cases uh, and any case that Mr. Michelini presents. However, in an abundance of caution and based on the advice of legal counsel, I am going to recuse myself from participation and voting on this matter this evening to eliminate even the appearance of any conflict. Thank you, Mr. McLeany. Thank you, Mr. Set, Mr. Chairman. I'll recuse myself. I'll file the appropriate paperwork next week, and uh, y'all have a good evening. Mr. Uh, Mr. Shelby, I, I know there's some situations that are going on. Uh, I want you to get with the city attorney. Uh, you know, Mr. McLean comes before us a lot, and I want a legal opinion. I don't want to be missing out on council members on votes, so I need to get an opinion uh, from you and uh, the legal department so we won't continue to have this when Mr. McLean comes before this council. Ms. Grimes, uh, I'm sure, and I would be very happy to uh, discuss that with you, um, perhaps, and then we can uh, have a discussion about that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You're, you're recognized, sir. Mis Mr. Um, Shelby, um, you know, whatever our decision is uh, for or against an applicant, um, there always could be litigation to, to argue um, that people are biased. If, um, if a, in, a, in a situation where, I have not faced this situation since I've been here, but in a situation where uh, someone files a lawsuit against one of our colleagues, is there any case study that that would potentially um, imply that any case law that would potentially imply that 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 casts some kind of cloud over the entire body? What I would not like to happen is if we vote for or against something, that later on a defense would be that the entire council was biased by the by a particular lawsuit against one of our colleagues. Without addressing your specific question generally, I think with regard to this application here tonight, I think it's incumbent upon any council member for any hearing at any time, if you are um, unable to be fair and impartial, you may choose to abstain from that uh, pursuant to Florida statutes. So um, I, the question would then be, um, barring anybody able to or um, wanting to state tonight that they are unable to be fair and impartial, uh, the presumption is that you can be and you will go forward with this hearing. So it is the opportunity for you and to my, my question is more, is not about individual, it, our perception of bias, because I don't think any of us would be sitting here if we thought we would be biased. But the, the question is, someone for or against a project um, could come after the fact and say that there was, um, there was some kind of cloud over the entire body because of a particular situation. And so it, do you, are you aware of any case law, or should we ask you yeah, to look up any case law? I don't believe it's appropriate to discuss that now okay. at this time. Thank you. All right, well, Mr. Shelby, uh, yes. uh, as the chairman of this council, I've given my instruction to get with Mrs. Grimes uh, and look at the ramification of Mr. Carlson's question as well, as, and also as it pertains to Mr. Dingfelder with Mr. Mr. McElhinney's cases. Uh, so we can get some answers on that, sir. Yes, sir. All right, let's proceed. Uh, staff for item number 11. 
Thank you, Council Annie Barnes, Development Coordination. Item number 11 is REZ 2099. The subject property is located at 202 North Armenia Avenue. The request is to rezone the property from RM16, residential multifamily, to plain development to allow development of medical and business professional office uses. I'll turn over the presentation to the Planning Commission, and after their presentation, I'll conclude mine. Thank you, Annie. Jennifer Malone with the Planning Commission, uh, REZ 2099. This is in the Central Tampa Planning District within the West Tampa Urban Village and the Armory Gardens neighborhood. Um, there's a transit stop adjacent to the subject site. It is, with, it is located within a level D evacuation zone and Bella Brothers Park is the closest park, approximately a quarter mile to the north of the subject site. Um, here's the aerial. The subject site is outlined in purple, so it's just north of Kennedy Boulevard, um, kind of at the corner of Armenia Avenue and West North A Street. I pointed out some of the offices that are already within the surrounding area. Um, to the east of the site are single-family single detached homes. The future land use is residential 20. To the east of the site is Community Mixed Use 35, so that's what those offices were developed under. And then further south is Urban Mixed Use 60. That's that um, purple color that runs along West Kennedy Boulevard. So the Residential 20 Future Land Use designation does allow limited neighborhoods serving commercial uses if they are um, consistent with the locational criteria within the comprehensive plan. Um, so this is the zoning was already was residential multifamily 16. The planning commission staff had to review the site to, to make sure that it was consistent with that commercial locational criteria. We had determined that it does meet the criteria um, for consideration for commercial uses because the subject site is adjacent to an arterial roadway that's North Armenia Avenue and vehicular access would not intrude upon the existing residential neighborhood located to the west of the site. Um, again, this portion of North Armenia contains several office uses, so there is a precedent for that here, um, and it definitely transitions to a mixture of office and residential uses. Um, and so we have determined that this proposed office use would be comparable, comparable and compatible with the comprehensive plan um, and in scale with the surrounding area. And I would also note that the applicant has proposed the square footage of 400 or 4,411 square feet square foot medical office building and that is within the floor area ratio of 0 0.5 that's allowable within the residential 20 feet of use designation. That concludes my presentation. I'll turn it over to Annie, but I'm available if there's any questions. Any questions, Ms. Malone? All right, Ms. Barnes. Thank you, Council. I'll share my screen. Oh, oh no. Alrighty, again, uh, the applicant is requesting to rezone 202 North Armenia Avenue from, from RM16 residential multifamily to plan development to allow development of medical and business professional office uses. The applicant is requesting four waivers. Um, for the first waiver is requested to reduce the backup width from six feet to 4.41 feet. The second waiver is to reduce the required eight foot landscape bu buffer to five feet to the east of the property. The third waiver requested is to reduce the required 15 foot buffer and six foot masonry wall along, along the west and north property line to five feet and a six foot masonry wall. The fourth waiver requested is to reduce the required parking uh, from 25 parking spaces to 18 uh, spaces, a 28% reduction. The site is comprised of the south half of lot 13 and all of uh, lot 14, block six of Terra Nova revised map subdivision platted in 1912 as shown here. Uh, this is a survey of the subject site, um, approximately 0.2 acres in size. This is the site plan submitted by the applicant with vehicular access provided from uh, off of North Armenia Avenue. Uh, these are elevations provided uh, by the applicant. Uh, shown here is an aerial map in the surrounding zoning. There are residential and office uses in the immediate area. Property directly west and north of the subject site are zoned uh, RM16 and developed with residential uses. Property directly east and south of the subject site are zoned CG commercial and developed with office uses. 
Uh, here's a current uh, a picture of the current uh, building on the subject site. Shown here is a picture of the property directly east and across North Armenia Avenue. Uh, here is a uh, property located directly uh, uh, west and adjacent to the site. Shown here is property located south of the subject site and across West North A Street. And uh, this is a picture further along West North A Street. Uh, properties surrounding the subject site are developed with residential and office uses. The proposed project uh, for medical and business professional office uses are compatible with the existing development pattern, but the requested waiver, waivers could create an adverse impact on the immediate neighborhood. Therefore, development review and compliance staff has reviewed the application and finds the overall request inconsistent with the City of Tampa Land Development Code. Uh, and I'm available for any questions you might have. Any questions for Ms. Barnes, gentlemen? Not a question, but I'd like to recognize just from thank you, Mr. Chairman, just from my memory. Is that close to the T D bank? Oh, that's Howard. All right, thank you very much. All right, sir. Any more questions for Ms. Barnes? All right, being none, we'll hear from the applicant. Uh, good evening, Council, Steve McElhaney. Um you may uh, those of you who are familiar with this area know that this was Dr. Valente's medical office. Uh, it was zoned RM16, which was an existing non-conforming use. It was built in 1965, and um, I just want to go through a couple of the pictures, and I, I know that, uh, that Annie pointed out a couple of things about being inconsistent. However, my, my discussion with you is uh, if the medical office was inconsistent and created an adverse impact, it, uh, it's been there for 56 years, and that adverse impact would have been established, or at least been at that point, um, it would have occurred many years ago. The, uh, the, property, the property is bordered on the north side uh, by these, uh, these oak trees and another commercial use. So we're asking for a reduction in the buffer uh, for the most part to accommodate the trees and the fact that the parking for the adjacent uh, commercial use is a meet is it directly on the property line it um, so there's not going to be any ad adverse impact regarding the buffer waiver on the f on the north side of the of the property this is a view looking um, south on Armenia at uh, North A Street and every corner is uh, is a developed in commercial office um, that you you can you can see it here and also extends up and down Armenia with both new and older offices um, this is directly across the street from the proposed redevelopment of the uh, the medical office site this is a view uh, of the current site and you can see the angle parking is there and it, and it directly abuts this commercial use here, which was identified in the staff report as a residential use. It's a, it's a commercial uh, design studio. And there's, there's the photograph showing you that it's a design studio going all, all the way up on the side. The, um, the other aspect of this property is, let me get to this other photograph here. Uh, the property to the west I don't see this right now but I'll find it the property to the west is um, is a re residence but their driveway and their garage just sits right on the property line and um, so the reduction of the uh, the reduction of the buffer on the west side where they have no masonry wall now, there will be a masonry wall. This is the um, let me get to this here. On the site data table, uh, we noted that the, that there were 
a, a comment in there that that this was going to create an adverse impact uh, to other uh, to the neighborhood, and uh, we we did a study regarding the um, the parking that was provided in the area, and we submitted this to the city. We submitted this to the city uh, in order to obtain uh, our, uh, we had a design way, uh, exception we were proposing <coughs> uh, regarding the transportation. And if you look in the far right hand column, you'll see the, the medical offices, um, this is the parking, the average number of parking spaces that, that they are providing and using on a, on a constant basis. And you have the uh, 2333 West Cypress, 602 South Howard, 202 North Armenia, which was this location, and uh, Tampa Bay Endocare at 110 Armenia, the Premier Care for Cosmetic Surgery, 2419, 605 North Howard, um, and 501 North Howard. We submitted this study in order to uh, obtain a, a, uh, a waiver from the city to demonstrate that the, um, the waivers that we were asking for and the reduction of the parking would not adversely impact anyone in this area. We have, uh, we notified it, everyone as in accordance with the code. Uh, I received one letter, I actually I received one phone call asking me about uh, what was being proposed there and when we indicated it was a replacement first to, to vest the existing medical use that was there and second um, to in the future build a new medical office building. The backup waiver that's being requested is internal to the site. Um, it is, it's the hammerhead. Uh, let me show you. If you look on the site plan, the reduction is, is this area here um, for the cars to back up, and you have a stairwell here. So there's plenty of room to back up uh, internally. This is all covered parking underneath the building that's being proposed. And um, you can see on here, on this, on this north side, all of the oak trees that are there <clears throat> and we're proposing um, the buffer there to be a masonry wall as well as over here where there currently isn't one. And on the front side where we're requesting the waiver, we already have existing, um, if you look at this photograph, we already have an existing uh, green space and buffer waiver on the front side. So the new construction will mimic that same area in the same kind of dimensions. This is uh, uh, located on the southbound uh, one-way one -way pairing of Armenia Avenue. As the staff has noted, um, the Planning Commission is supporting this and finds it consistent. I believe that the, the city staff's objections, uh, as I said, it's an existing medical office. The impact of this would have occurred um, back 50 some odd years ago if there was going to be an adverse impact. Each of the corners going north from here and south all the way to Kennedy uh, are characterized with medical or business and professional offices, law offices. Um, so we're not introducing a new element here that hasn't already existed. The setbacks we're proposing, <coughs> um, or the front would be five feet, the rear would be 9.4 feet, the side five feet uh, on the north side and, five, and 10 feet on the south side. The landscape buffers uh, being proposed at the front would be five, rear five, uh, side five, and south would be eight. The, uh, Medical office requires six units, uh, six spaces per thousand square feet, uh, and that's why we're requesting the waiver. We're providing 18 total spaces, one of which is ADA. 
six are regular spaces, 11 are compact spaces. This is for uh, a scheduled outpatient type surgery office for a cardiologist. And uh, as I said to you that we did the study with the other properties and their utilization and we've submitted this to the city already. Uh, and this is, the, this is the chart which they have, which shows the utilization. Um, and we believe that the, the 18 spaces we're providing will be adequate for this, this particular use. This is a single doctor uh, and his wife. Practitioners, this is not a multi-doctor medical office is being proposed. We're in the, uh, we're on the edge of the West Tampa the West Tampa district and as such we'll have to meet certain design elevation requirements for the facade uh, and we believe that considering all of the factors involved that we have met the, the intent and the character that's necessary for the code. Let me run through a couple of other things that that we have to uh, we have to meet <coughs> is the um, Natural Resources has some comments in here regarding trees that they think should be removed and those that should be protected. Um, the section of the code that we have to meet is promote the efficient and sustainable use of the land and infrastructure uh, with consideration for potential adverse impacts to the natural elements and surrounding impact neighborhoods. We believe that we are not making any adverse impact on the, sub on the surrounding neighborhoods um, or the natural elements that are there. We're trying to preserve the trees that are there and we're asking for setback waivers for the buffers to accommodate that. Allow for the integration of different uses and densities of one development that would not otherwise provide allowed under the general zoning districts. We have to go to a PD in this case because first we have um, a non-conforming medical office that, that's zoned RM16 and second, we have to deal with the trees that are there and the off-site conditions regarding the parking that is a existing, that's zero lot line on the north side of the property. Uh, we are proposing the building to be no, uh, comply with the code at 35 feet in height, which is less than what would normally be allowed under CG, if it were CG. Encourage the flexible land development that produces transportation needs, conserves energy, and maximizes the preservation of natural resources. Um, we are less than a block away from a major transit center at, uh, and bus stop at Armenia and Kennedy. <clears throat> and we are trying to preserve the existing uh, live oaks that are existing on the site. Promote and encourage development where appropriate in location and character. As I said, this has been here for 56 years. Um, it's one of the few corners that has not been redeveloped and, and along that stretch of Armenia. So we're not introducing any new, <clears throat> any new development pattern here. It's an existing one, and we believe that any impact adverse that would have been uh, present there had already occurred many years ago. Promote a more desirable living and working environments. Uh, <clears throat> the proposed use is a medical business professional and would allow for several other uh, types of uses we believe that this is a, a less intensive and more compatible use since it's already existing and people are used to being um, going to this location. And although it was a dentist office and it's changing to a cardiologist, the location is in close proximity or in, in, in good location between Memorial Hospital, Tampa General, <clears throat> as the two major hospitals within a few miles of this location. Promote the architectural features We'll have to meet the design guidelines of the West Tampa overlay, and we will make sure that we do that. Also, in terms of the FAR and the development intensity of the site, uh, there was a question raised by staff that we accommodate and meet that requirement, and we clarified that with our engineer in, in our site plan, and those corrections have been made. So, uh, in summary, uh, we believe that the Planning Commission and their support uh, has found it correctly that this is consistent and should be approved. And the second part is the staff, I think, missed some of the, some of the issues regarding this being an existing medical office and uh, our site constraints that we were trying to address. The buffers are, I think, justified in, with consideration to the existing trees, 
the existing development to the north, and the existing development to the west. And all of those conditions will be better in the post condition than they are currently in the present. I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Any questions from the applicant? Any questions for the applicant? All right. Anyone here to speak on this item on the second floor? I have, I have a question for Mr. Michelini, if I can. All Mr. right. Well, you're recognized, sir. Thank you very much. Mr. Michelini, if you would please show up that, that list you just put down. Can you put that back for me a moment? We're still not saying it. Thank you very much. Comparatively speaking, all uh, these two, four, six, seven locations, uh, relative to what you're asking for, what what you're petitioning for, uh, were these all built recently, and these parking requirements are the same as what this uh, location is? The, to or my, were they, or were they built? I, I see now. I see the years built. Uh, so how how are you comparing these to the years that they were built, the parking spaces, and what you're asking for now? Well, the most recent one is uh, 2019, um, which was 4.12 spaces that they were providing per thousand square feet, and um, we're proposing uh, 4.81, which is higher than that. Um, the other ones are existing. Um, Obviously, they were older spaces, but they've been renovated. Some of them came in for rezoning, and I did check the rezoning for another site that was in the immediate vicinity that recently came before council, and um, it was it was very similar to this. So, okay, Mr. Mickley, thank you. I'm I'm just just trying to figure out how you're 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 comparing something that was built back in 1948 and 1961. <clears throat> With, with today, but I, I thank you, Mr. McLean. Well, the one that I think I'd point out is that 2019 is the most recent one, and that's that has less parking uh, per thousand square feet than we have. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. McLean. Any other questions for the applicant? Ms. Barnes, I see your hand. Thank you, Council. Um, any questions? Uh, I know Jonathan Scott is on the line for any transportation related questions. Um, for the record, uh, I wanted to state that the applicant provided uh, uh, on the site plan um, the subject site north of the property as mixed use residential. Um, that site is also zoned RM16 multifamily uh, and therefore requires that, that buffer. Um, a formal decision would need to be made uh, on behalf um, of the zoning administrator to determine if the office use is a legal non-conforming use on that RM16 zone property. Thank you. Any other questions for staff? That, that, she said non-conforming. I'm sorry, I missed that second part. No problem. So, so uh, the office use would not be um, allowed by right in an RM16 zoning district. So, in order to determine if it's a legal non-conforming use to the north, um, a, Formal decision would need to be made on uh, from the zoning administrator stating that. If, if I could respond to that, council, we don't own that property. I, I was only pointing out that it's a commercial uh, design studio, and normally um, you would have a 15-foot buffer. We're proposing a six-foot masonry wall along that side and a reduction to five feet. And as I showed you on the photographs, that's a very difficult um, buffer to deal with because of all of those oak trees. And I, and I think I showed you this picture. Oh. There we go. We have a number of multi-trunk oak trees right there. And that's, that sits right on the property line. And the other property, it, its parking is, um, is angled and sits right on the property line coming from the north side facing south. So we're not asking, we're not trying to vest their property. We're not asking for anything in that regard. Um, but we are asking for the reduction in the buffer. Mr. Randy, recognize I, I, I believe that's, uh, now that I can, Mr. Miscalco will help me with get my bearings straight. I believe that that uh, just this property, we're talking about the rezoning here on file REZ 20-99. Uh, 
It's just north. There's an alleyway, and then you got the Tampa General uh, outpatient clinic there, I believe. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Okay, now I got my bearings. Thank All you. right. Any other questions for the applicant? All right. Uh, I think Ms. Eileen is down there. Anybody on the second floor for this item? Eileen, that's out of development and growth management. There's no one here to speak on this item. And good night. All right, good night to you. We thank you for the mentor. Yes, thank you for the mentors. <laughs> All right. Uh, no registered speakers for this item. All right, the registered speakers. Move to close. Mr. Mascal, let's move. Second. Mr. Uh, <laughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right, uh, Mr. Brother, what's the state? Mr. Miranda, can you do the honors for the evening? Uh, I'll try, Mr. Chairman. Uh, file number. 11 file number REZ 20 99. Ordinance be presented for first reading consideration. An ordinance rezoning property in general vicinity of 202 North Armenia Avenue, the city of Tampa, Florida, and more particularly described in section one from zoning district classification RM 16 residential multifamily to PD plan development office medical business professional providing an effective date. As far as the waivers, uh, under section 27-139-4, the design of the proposed uh, development is unique and therefore in need of waivers. The requested waivers would not substantially interfere or injure the rights of others whose property would be affected by the waivers. Under the development code section 27-136, the proposed development as shown on the site plan promotes and encourages development that is appropriate in location, character, and compatibility with the surrounding neighborhood. Propose, use, promotes the eff effective and substantial use of land and infrastructure. Uh, the uh, proposed zoning is comparable and compatible with the surrounding development patterns. Promote a range of uses in close proximity to each other pursuant to the land use policy 1.2.8 and the proposed rezoning achieves land use policy 9.3 which encourages areas adjacent or within neighborhoods that are planned for non-residential use to be developed in a manner that is sensitive and compatible to the effective neighborhood second and mr miranda i believe is there a rezoning a revision sheet excuse me associated with this um mr michelini is there a revision sheet yes sir we commit to making the revisions as requested by staff between first and second reading thank and you along with the revisions as requested by staff between first and second reading still a second all right mr uh, citro a second then roco miranda yes dinkfelder carlson yes maniscaco yes Vieira. Citro? Yes. And Goods? Yes. Motion carried. Ding fell abstaining. Second reading and adoption will be held on November 4th at 9.30 a.m. Thank you very much, Council. All right, we come to that time. Uh, Mr. Vieira? Uh, yes, sir, just one, if I may. Um, the, December 2nd, what does our agenda look like that day, Mr. Shelby and Mr. Chair? Uh, I, I was cool. wanting to make a motion to give a Tampa City Council commendation to Dr. Jason Wilson who a lot of us know is such a fine gentleman, has been such a great advocate for um, safety and, and uh, responsibility whenever it comes to COVID-19. Um, that's Well, I mean, do you guys want to move it to a different date, in other words? I can, I can. No, I'll second it. All right, Mr. Vieira, Mr. Citro is second. All in favor? All right. Any opposed? Thank, thank you, Chair. Mr. Chair. Thank you, Council. Uh, that's it. Mr. Maniscalco. No, sir. Thank you very much. Mr. Carlson. Yes, just one quickly. Um, I met yesterday with the National Defense Industry Association. I don't know if you all have met with them yet. Um, it's a group that, that I've been in and around for a while here. Um, but, you know, every 10 years or so, BRAC comes up regarding um, uh, McDill and it's not apparently coming up right now but uh, every time i think i've been through three cycles now with the chamber the chamber always mobilizes for it uh, but this organization is is a separate organization made up of former uh, defense department people and uh, they look at they study what is happening in other cities and how to how to maintain uh, mcdill and so they would like to come give us a, a short presentation uh, usually we say up to 10 minutes 
um, on what it would take, what we need to do to plan for the long term regarding the area around McDill and what the community needs to do as a whole to support McDill to make sure it stays strong and that we support the, uh, the, the, the people who work on the base. So I would propose, if you all are okay with that, then uh, maybe January 13th that we would ask them to give a, uh, ask the National Defense Industry Association to give a presentation up to 10 minutes um, starting at nine o'clock. Mr. Shelby, you recognize? Ms. Uh, Mr. Chairman, with regard to uh, um, the uh, the motion, I would just um, perhaps suggest there is presently no ceremonial or presentation set, did you say, for January 13th? Yes. The question is, is it or could it be appropriate to hold that motion for the following regular meeting because this may be the subject of discussion at Monday special call workshop regarding your scheduling for the coming year? So if, if you don't, it's, well, we can it's always talk. We can always talk on Monday about the other schedules. But right now, there's nothing really on. Well, January. the question the question is whether it's going to be council's decisions to move presentations and the like to different um, different options. So rather than set it now, we can wait a week if you want to, and council changes its mind or makes a decision. Then we're going to have to perhaps move them. But uh, it, I'm just seeing now as we move into the, the coming year. We're only a few days away from, from at least. I can move it to December if you'd rather do that. I was trying to move it. I mean, I can move it to December oh, 16th. I was trying to move it to January just to find an I think, date. Mr. Cross, I think we can get it, still get it done, but I think Mr. Silver just asked if you just give us a little latitude to after Monday's meeting. I think we should probably still get it in for January or whatever, but if you could just give a little latitude. Yeah. You mind? Yeah, yeah, no, I just, uh, okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, and, and again, I, I do see his point. We, you know, we, we're going to recognize those folks and get them here because we need to, we need them to speak. But you know, Monday we got Monday coming up, and that way we can kind of know where we're going to go for the first of the year. I mean, we don't want to bump your people with that motion. We got to change it. So I, I can see where Mr. Shelby's going. I bet, uh, count, Mr. Chairman, uh, respectfully, I just point out that it looks like December 16th, which is the last meeting of the year for you. You have no night meeting, and you have a commendation for police officer of the month. But I believe that's your only presentation or commendation set for December. So if, if that's doable, Councilman. Mr. Carlson? Yeah, I mean, they could do it next week. I was just trying to be nice and move it to January. <laughs> but if we can do it December 16th, that would be great. All right, let's, let's, since Mr. Shelby said that, let's make it December 16th. We'll close out December 16th with that, and then Monday we'll make our recommendation going forward for the first of the year. And then Most again, members, I'm sorry, before you did the vote again, the time you're associating with that is how long? Uh, up to 10 minutes. Thank you. Ah. Most of Mr. Carlson. Second. Second. Mr. Citro. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Anything else, sir? All right. Mr. Citro. Uh, yes, it's that time again. Uh, I've had some conversations with some people downtown, and I would like to make a motion to request an in-person uh, report from staff regarding the potential options for changes to our parking minimums in the downtown area with potential to other parts of the city, uh, you know, i.e., uh, if funding does come through for our streetcar extension, uh, with hopes we could promote that. Uh, and I would like to have that if we could, Mr. Chair, on December 16th. Can I make a friendly amendment to that, sir? Surely. We've been getting a lot of calls about uh, parking in the downtown area and some of the other areas in reference to uh, some folks can reserve spots and some folks can't reserve spots. Uh, and at several calls, of uh, from some businesses and so forth. So if Mr. Beebe can get a report on that, on the uh, uh, policy on uh, the reserve parking spaces that are utilized by citizens or how they're paid for or, or whatever policy we do have or if there's a policy that needs to be made. But uh, if, if we want to piggyback that, I'm, I'm amenable to that. Vic, you've got your work cut out for you for the 16th. All right. <laughs> we need to take a vote on that. All right, Mr. Carlson, second it. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? No. A motion. I, I didn't mean I wasn't opposed to it. Motion carried. Anything else, sir? Uh, to my good friend, EJ, thank, thank you. Good seeing you again today. All right. That's our son. I know. And thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I just want to say a little shout out to the uh, Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, it, it's, uh, you know, you fall short a little bit. But then you look at what they've done, and, and I'm not a baseball expert, 
Oh, I yeah, yeah. come on. You? But, no, I haven't. <laughs> you, you're an expert. You've only been here a couple of days. Oh, a day. A couple of days, but he's no expert. I can, I tell, you, can tell you, I can tell you this. And the little knowledge that I have, no organization in the last 10 years, maybe even more than that, have done what they've done with a payroll that they have and how they bring up young individuals mm -hmm. and make them what they are. It's the molding, not the salaries, but it's the cohesiveness of a group working together. When you talk about any business, and baseball and football and hockey and soccer and basketball, they're all businesses just like anything else. I don't think there's any team in all of baseball that's accomplished what they have, and I've said this publicly before, what they've done with what they have and how they mold the young players with the other players. For instance, Waka was one of the starters for the Cardinals, and he was a protege of Wayne Wright. Wayne Wright is still 39 or 40, still winning more games is what he's losing. And if you look at Waka and you look at Wayne Wright, their mentality is the same in pitching. And the batters that they have, they bring in people that were not – discarded or not approved of for whatever reason. Uh, Arenda Rosa and, and uh, the young kid that started baseball when he was 16, he's not even 21, he's going to be an animal playing uh, uh, the way he hits and the way he runs and the mentality that he has towards the game. He's a shortstop now, but that's what he does. But he's a fantastic player. And you see guys that uh, not built no bigger than you and I, and they're hitting 30 home runs, 35 home runs, 39 home runs. They had a catcher who couldn't hit his weight at one time, and he hit like 30 home runs. So it's not all about home runs. It's working together. And if you work together and stay together, you're going to win more than you're going to lose. And I have to give a shot to the organization. On the other side, you know how I am about other things, and I'm not going to mention those. But I just say there's no organization in baseball that I know have done what they've done with the amount of money that they had to spend. Here. But you're an expert. You've been around here two days, but you've been a ball coach. One day. You've been a, well. One day you've been a ball coach. <laughs> and I can tell you, when you have a great season and you can't get to the finish, and I don't care what anybody say that's the most hurting feeling. Well, be. baseball is how the ball bounces, yeah, and it had yeah. some foundry bounces in that yeah. last game. Oh yeah, oh yeah. All right. Well, we we wish the Rays good luck next year, and uh, they can keep the payroll there and keep the people there. We should be get, get a championship. World Series team, uh, all the way with a, with a presentation soon. That's anything it. else, sir? That's it. Mr. Shelby, anything, sir? Nothing for me. Thank Proceed you, uh, Council. Right. Just a, one, more, one, more, one more last thing, just a reminder to the Council that we have a special call workshop Monday morning at 10 a.m. right here to talk about um, scheduling and the agendas. All right. Motion to receive file was by Mr. Rand. Say one, Mr. Maniscalco. All in favor? All right. All right. We are adjourned. Catch that uh, Philly Bucks game. Let's go. Catch that